Just one, two. Test, test. Yes, test. Test one two. Test one two. Test one two. Test one two. Honorable members, Madam Speaker. Prayer. Almighty God, who in your infinite wisdom and providential goodness have appointed of of leaders and parliaments for the affair of society and the just government of humanity, we beseech you to look upon the abundant prayer of these servants whom have been placed to the performance of such important trust in this land. Let your blessing descend upon them here assembled and grant that they may, as in your presence, treat and consider all matters that shall come under their deliberation in so just and faithful a manner as promoting and glory, and to advance the good of those whose interests have committed to their charge. Communication from the chair. Honorable members, I wish to welcome you to today's city. And on a special note, I want to welcome the right honorable emeritus. You're most welcome. I would also like to commend the chairpersons and members of the sectoral committees that managed to make reports of the ministerial policy statements within the prescribed time as per the rules 1491. Thank you so much and congratulations. I would like to remind the Committee on Finance, Planning 
and economic development to ensure that they process the tax bills to provide for us way as implementing the budget and government programs. We need those tax bills as soon as possible. I want to thank you again for coming to the house after a long sitting last evening. Thank you so much. Matters of national importance. And real on a special note, uh, Honorable Justin, thank you for the work you did yesterday in mobilizing the signatures. You became a, a chairperson of chairpersons. Uh, matters of national importance, Ababiku, Jessica. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, for this opportunity. I rise on a on a matter of national importance, that is the poor implementation of program called Uganda Support for Infrastructure Development for Municipalities, especially in refugees hosting communities. Right on our speaker, this project started in 2019 and it is five years project which is ending next year. But the designs for the road component has never been done. And the project is ending next financial year. Right when I will speak at the government kept sending monies to local governments hosting refugees. And at the end of each financial year, these monies were returned because we do not have approved designs. For three years, right when I was speaker, I request that the Ministry of Lands and Urban Development comes to this house and explain to the country why a design has taken three years without being completed. And two, why should monies be sent to local governments without having designs approved? It retains the image of our local governments negatively in terms of absorption capacities. Lastly, right on our speaker, we want assurance whether we shall not lose our monies. Thank you so much, right on our speaker. Thank you, Honorable Babiko. Government. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker, right, Honorable Speaker. Uh, this is my maiden speech. Actually, I, we are seeing you here for the first time. And I wish to congratulate you on your appointment on that high office to this August assembly. My name's uh, Sam Mayanja. I'm the Minister of State for Lands. Minister of State for Land, so I'm in, from the Minister of Land. Yes, yes. Now, um, on, on the issue, Sam, what they are saying, first remove the mask and they see your face. They've never seen you. Oh, okay. Thank you. Right, Honorable Speaker, I would like to request for a period of about 10 days to enable the ministry prepare the program and a, a full statement on this issue of uh, ISMIT. And then I would come back to this August assembly and give a full statement. Uh, 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 Sam, have you, have you just learned of this issue or you've been getting complaints from different districts? Right, when I was speaker, this is not my direct uh, uh, the, the matter for us. Uh, that's why I'm asking for time. Then I'll sit with, uh, but I own, uh, I own as a ministry, we shall come and give a full statement. And anyway, give us a reply on Tuesday next week. 
Thank you. We will not give you 10 days. Thank you. We need a response on Tuesday. Most guided, Madam Speaker. Yes. I wish to advise Honorable Minister who has appeared here for the first time that it, this problem is very big. USMID started with 14 municipalities. It took on more. Quite a good chunk of money has been sunk into it. Roads have been made, but every municipality is complaining of shoddy work. Designs or design have already been made, but the workmanship is all poor. Talk of Masaka, talk of Umbari, talk of Arua, Guru everywhere. Unless you have a very competent chairperson or technical person within the municipalities. Otherwise, the situation is very alarming. And I wish let him not take the, the terrace that is coming here next week. It's the problem is very big. And members here know it, especially who are coming from municipalities. Can we hear from the Prime Minister? Uh, thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. I've heard from the Honourable Members of Parliament, but uh, to me, I would say not all the municipalities, because we have moved to those municipalities but at least we have some municipalities which have good work. Like Kamuli. Yeah, of course, Kamuli it is one of them. Yes, I have seen and it. I have been to Lira, I've been to Arua. So some of those places are good. But of course, for those ones which are not, which have short work, even in Bali, recently I was in Bali. Those ones which have short work, we shall try, uh, of course, uh, take it up and see that the uh, work is improved. Thank you. Uh, where the works are not being done well, government should follow it up. You'll find that maybe it is because of the contractors and that kind of thing, and that should be rectified. But the minister should also report back to this house to that matter. Yes. Thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. Most obliged. The right Honourable Speaker, part of the challenge to which the Prime Minister is pledging a follow up relates to the way Parliament has been over the last couple of months being disabled from functioning. Key committees of parliament are supposed to inspect some of these works. The Rock Government Accounts Committee. For the bigger part of the financial year, they have been disabled and are unable to go and follow up some of these civil works all over the country. But on the speaker, this house needs to resolve where there is no follow-up for accountability, there should be no expenditure. As long as government wants to spend, they must accept that there should be a follow-up, oversight. Where there's no oversight, there should be no expenditure. Otherwise, we shall be coming here to lament, and I want to believe, right on the speaker, that now that we are in the budget cycle, there will be no expenditure. and do their oversight work. For us to be here and expect government to come and report on itself, the executive to come and report on its failures to parliament is asking too much for them. So it should be upon parliament to demand of space, its resources to go and undertake oversight and hold government, the executive accountable, right on the speaker. That's what we should be doing. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, uh, Solomon. Right on our speaker, I want to thank the Prime Minister for
Right on our speak, I ask for your protection from the right on our Justin Castle and Mumba. Right on our speaker, the clarification I want to seek from the Prime Minister. You have told us <laughs> that there are roads in municipalities <clears throat> that are good, and you have counted the different municipalities. Right on our speaker, the clarification I want to seek is we are not talking about we are talking about worst case scenarios. Uganda is the same and there should be equality in everything. Honorable Silwani, Honorable Silwani, I have made an order. Let the ministry, let government go and assess all the works that are being done in cities and report back to this house. And that. where there is a problem, they must take an action. Honorable Mamawi. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I rise on the matter of national pundits. Right Honorable Speaker. and timbers are lying in the government forest reserve which is Izoka central forest reserve and right on our speaker over 10 machines are working day and night in Izoka central forest reserve and this has caused an alarm in my constituency right on our speaker and I've been receiving a call from day and night on the same matter Right on our speaker, our prayer is let the line minister is taking place in the Zoka Central Forest Reserve. Second, to the right on our oh. speaker, our prayer is James, move your microphone a little bit. Thank you, most, most of the last right on our speaker. So can you repeat what uh, right now, speaker? Our our second prayer is you first tell us the first prayer because we never had it. Thank you, right now, speaker. Uh, as it has caused alarm in our constituency, our first prayer as a community also is that let the minister take actions and visit the forest and give information to this parliament, right on the speaker, as far as the afforestation in Izoka Forest is concerned. Secondly, right on the speaker, there are so many people, as I mentioned, there are so many machines working in this forest. Let the culprits be put in a book and appropriate action be taken against the persons who are involved in these activities, right on the speaker. Thirdly, Zoka Central Forest Reserve needs a massive afforestation or reafforestation as far as that destruction is, is concerned. Therefore, our appeal to the government is to take this matter very serious. Where actions can be taken, we shall be very grateful. Thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. Thank you. Government. I want to thank the Honourable Member for the concern. I'm going to take it up with the minister, and the minister will come here and make a report. Thank you. Uh, the minister will come back and report to this house on your matter. Thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. In a week's uh, time. Right Honourable Speaker, I'm a member of Government Assurance Committee, and already the statement the Right Honourable Minister has mentioned is an assurance. So I wish that be taken very serious and where possible time for them be given. Thank you. Uh, Dennis. Thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker. I am raising on behalf of the people of Katikamu North whom I represent here in Parliament. Yesterday we had bad rains in my constituency. Uh, at least uh, two people lost lives. 151 houses were demolished and 21 are badly uh, in bad situation. They are admitted in hospital. My prayer is to ask the line minister to come in and swiftly uh, save 
uh, these people that were badly affected by the heavy downpour. Thank you so much. Prime Minister. Sorry for what happened to our people, but I request that uh, you get in touch with the uh, district uh, disaster committee so that they can forward to us uh, that they complaint in writing, then the, I mean, the government will take it up from there. Thank you. So as you wait for the team to come over, let the disaster committee make a, a report that you forward to, to the prime minister's office for an action to be taken. Next item. Item three, laying of papers, the parish development model. Uh, the Honorable Minister of Local Government. We had asked you to come and lay the policy framework paper and then the regulations. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I beg to lay on table the parish development model policy framework, March 2022. I beg to lay. Let's lay. And I beg to inform the members that we have prepared enough copies for all of you. Right now, they are being delivered into your pigeon holes. I thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Minister. The policy framework paper has been laid on the table. And uh, I encourage you to read it before we start any debate on it. Conceptualize it, then you will come back here and discuss it. Item four, statement by minister on the admission of the Democratic Republic of Congo into the East African community. Honorable members, the East African community regional block has been ever growing to an advantage to the citizens of the East African community. Since its inception, we have seen the admission of Rwanda, Burundi, South Sudan, and now DRC. And the coming on board of DRC comes with a big market for the regional and the various opportunities for the community. I wish to congratulate DRC for joining the mighty East African community. And I also want to thank in a special way, the Council of Ministers and the summit who have worked hard to ensure that DRC joins the, the community. And uh, we congratulate our brothers there. Now let's listen from the hon Right Honorable First Deputy Prime Minister and the Minister of East African Affairs. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Begin by congratulating you and uh, Honorable Taewa on your elevation to these offices. And I wish you well. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Speaker and the members, proceeding under Rule 51, one of the rules of procedure, I'm here to brief the country about the latest developments in the East African community. Now, members, as you're aware, the East African community, a regional intergovernment organization comprising of the Republic of Burundi, the Republic of Kenya, the Republic of Uganda, the Republic of South Sudan, the United Republic of Tanzania, and the Republic of Uganda has its headquarters in Arusha, Tanzania. The mission of the EAC is to widen and deepen economic, political, social, cultural integration, to improve the quality of life of the people of East Africa, 
to increase competitiveness, value added production, trade and investments. In line with the above mission, the AEC has reinforced the application of the DRC to become a member of the East African community. And this is within the powers of the treaty. Article three of the treaty provides that uh, certain matters should be taken into account when considering the application by a foreign country to become a member of the community. One, acceptance of the community as set out in the treaty. Two, adherence to universal sector principles of good governance, democracy, rule of law, observance of human rights and social justice. C, the potential contribution, the strengthening of integration within the East African region. Four, geographical proximity, two, and interdependence between it and the partner states. And uh, for your information, our members, Democratic Republic of Congo shares the border with all the countries of East Africa, except Kenya. Five, establishment and maintenance of the market-driven economy, and F, social and economic policies being compatible with those of the community. On our members, the Democratic Republic of Congo applied joined the community, and uh, before admission, they were evaluated against the above criteria. The following steps were taken. By note of a bar, on 4th June 2019, the Democratic Republic of Congo submitted the application to join the East African community. Two, the 21st Ordinary Summit of the Heads of State, held on February 27, 2021, considered the application and directed the Council of Ministers to expeditiously undertake a verification mission. On the first, this first meeting of the Sectoral Council of Ministers, responsible for ESC and planning on 11th June 2021, appointed a verification team comprising of officials from the EIC partner states and supported by a team from the EIC Secretariat. The verification mission of the DRC was conducted both in Goma and Kinshasa from 26 June to 4th July 2021. The verification team comprehensively interacted with the various ministries, departments, agencies in the DRC with a view to fully appreciating the structure and institutional setup, as well as their policies and procedures vis-a-vis -vis the East African policy and legal framework. In their report, the team established that the DRC is considerably conforming the ESC structural requirements for admission of foreign countries as new members. Five, the 45th Extraordinary Council of meeting, uh, meeting of Ministers held on 20th December 2021, received, considered, and forwarded to the summit of heads of state the report of the verification team. On the 18th, on the 18th Extraordinary Summit of the East African Heads of State, held virtually on 22nd December 2021, the summit received and considered the report of the council on the verification mission on the admission of the DRC and directed the council to expeditiously commence and conclude negotiations with the DRC for admission to the East African community and report the next summit. On uh, 24th January, between the 15th and 24th January, 2022, negotiations were carried out between the East African community and the DRC the DRC accepted to be bound by the current legal framework of the ESC. At the 46th Extraordinary Council of the Ministers, held on the 8th February 2022, the report of the uh, negotiations was considered and adopted, and the Council recommended the summit considered meeting the DR Congo into the community. At the 19th Extraordinary Summit of the East African Community Heads of State, held via video conference, on 29th March 2022, the DRC was admitted as full member of the East African community, directed this, and the Minister, Council of Ministers was directed to develop a map, a roadmap of integration of the DRC into the community. Uh, in light of the above, the final admission was concluded under Article 3.3.
The 19th Extraordinary Summit designated the H. President Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta, chairperson of the summit, signed the Treaty of Accession between the ESC and the Democratic Republic of Congo by the 14th April 2022. I'm delighted to inform you that this process was conducted extremely fast by the signing of the Treaty of Accession by the DRC on the 8th of April 2022. Therefore, the President Hul Kenyatta signed on behalf of the summit, and President Felix Antoine Shisekedi Shilombo, President of the DRC, signed on behalf of his country. The Treaty of Accession commits the Democratic Republic of Congo, one, to the treaty for the East African community and all its protocols. It is committed to the tripartite agreement between the ESC, COMESA, and the SADC, and various other memoranda of cooperation subsisting. Among the areas of cooperation in the Treaty of Accession are the following, cooperation in legal and political matters, cooperation in trade, finance, investment, monetary and fiscal matters, three, cooperation in infrastructure matters, four, cooperation in productive sectors, five, cooperation in social sectors, six, participation in the ES institutions, projects and programs, G, financial obligations, H, registration of the treaty with the African Union, the United Nations, and any other organizations as the Council of Ministers shall determine. And now that the Treaty of Accession has been signed, the Democratic Republic of Congo will commence the internal processes, beginning with the domestication of the treaty into the municipal law of the DRC, ratification of all the existing protocols, and thereafter, the instrument of ratification will be posted with the Secretary General of the East African Community. Thereafter, the Secretary General will transmit the instruments to the African Union, the United Nations, and any other uh, body where we shall uh, direct. The, uh, and after that, during that period, the East African Community will facilitate uh, sensitization within the structures of the ESC, of the DRC, and the major pillars of discussion will be the customs union, the common market, the monetary union, and later the issue of the confederation. During these six months, they will indicate which parts of the customs union they would like to start with, which pillars of the common market they are considering handling first, and when they will be, whether they'll be ready for the monetary union in 2024. By 1st of October, 2022, before the above are handled, the officials of the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo will commence uh, participation in our meetings and other activities. On our members, the map of uh, East Africa, East African community has drastically been amended the admission of the, the Congo has a, a number of benefits. One, we, ha we have now over a population of 300 million people. It's an expanded market with big opportunities for produce and, and other services. Uh, this will enhance the prosperity of our people. This ESC will have a global connectivity from the Indian Ocean to the Atlantic Ocean. And for a landlocked country like Uganda, I think it is really good if we have a route to the sea, one to the Indian Ocean, and the second one to the Atlantic through the port of Matadi. So this will support existing trade corridors, the movement of goods and people into the hinterland of the African continent. There's need for quick and targeted investment and needs roads and related infrastructure to tap into this opportunity. I'm aware that the Republic of Rwanda and the Republic of Uganda are working on uh, joint infrastructure with the DRC to ease the movement of uh, goods and people. Uh, secondly, DRC is a predominantly French-speaking country. This will now require the use of French in the community. Indeed, for the first time on the 8th of April, the summit was addressed in French. This is related to the decision of the ESC 21st Summit of the Heads of State held in February 27, 2021, which adopted French and Swahili as the other official languages of the community in addition to English. 
the non-French speaking partner states like Uganda must now it put in place modalities of learning and using French, as well as Swahili, as these are now official languages. I'll be tabling in cabinet memorandum on how Uganda will implement this uh, directive on, on these two languages. But there will also be need for additional resources to enable the Ministry of East Africa effectively participate in all activities related to the integration of DRC into the community, and all particularly bilateral arrangements that will enable Uganda to leverage and competitively tap into the DRC market. I'll also be presenting to cabinet a paper on that issue. And just to assure the members, I'm not going to look at the opportunities being taken by other countries. I'll be sure that the Ugandans are visible and vibrant in the community and in trade with the DRC. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, the right one of our first deputy prime minister. I will now allow a debate for 10 minutes. If there is anything you want to say, Honorable Katesh, Feta, Thank you very much, uh, Right Honorable Speaker. I want to thank the First Deputy Prime Minister for the statement and congratulate the government of Uganda for this achievement of uh, ensuring that the DRC joins the East African community. Right Honorable Speaker and colleagues, this is a very big achievement. However, I think that uh, we need to do a lot when these opportunities come so that we stop celebrating but actually celebrate the benefits. I'm glad that the minister, the, the right honorable deputy prime minister has indicated that she will be presenting a cabinet memorandum on Uganda's strategy and competitively tapping into the DRC. DRC is only in the area of trade and i would like to encourage the to propose to the deputy prime minister that we should look at other sectors like education i know that there is a lot of opportunity in education if we are able to accommodate and uh, and uh, now that we are promoting the languages we will have a lot of uh, students from drc coming here to study that's an untapped opportunity but in other areas, also on tourism, we have very many international organizations in DRC, and uh, there is a lot that can be done. So I want to urge the, the Right Honorable Prime Minister to do that. But secondly, Right Honorable Deputy Prime Minister, as we have been in the community, we have got members in the community who are dragging the progress of the ESC. For example, this house appropriates our contribution to the ESC. But we know there are members in the community who have not been paying, but they have to sit on the decision-making table. And when they don't sit, because decisions are made by consensus, we are not able to move. I don't know what solutions you have. Move with majority, so that we, may, we are able to make progress. Finally, I want to raise the issue of trade. And I've raised it before this house that we have the common external tariff that we have been implementing since 2005. At that time, our stage of industrialization was not like it is now. Now that we are promoting import substitution, I think the review has taken long and I would like to request government to speed up that process so that we promote our industries and make sure that we create jobs for our people. Thank you very much, I submit. Thank you. Thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker. I join my colleague in thanking the Deputy Prime Minister for the presentation. West Nile, became part of this country in 1914. And we have been seeing how this country would benefit 
if Congo was part of East African community. We have been facing challenges where you find there is a Kakwa in Uganda and a Kakwa in Congo. There is Lubara in Uganda, there is Lubara in Congo, but you need a visa to visit your brother. So I want to thank government, I want to thank East African community for accepting that Congo should be part of the East African community. But there are two key issues. One, the opportunities of trade. Congo comes with a very huge potential and it is our mandate to ensure that we tap these opportunities very well. There is uh, timber, there is all top sources of, of opportunities in, in Congo. And Uganda would benefit much more than the rest of the countries because we seem to be more prepared and more strategically positioned. So I want to appeal that we take advantage of this. But also most important also is the issue of security. Because East Congo, the whole of Congo is not stable in terms of security. We've had the citizens of this country go to as far as Durba and they, they, they get problems along the way. So as a house, as a parliament, I think we need to support government in helping our brothers in Congo to stabilize in terms of security. I thank you very much. Koli, Manalwa Gwal, local government, Dororo, then I come this side. Thank you very much, White Honorable Speaker, for giving me this opportunity. And thank you very much also uh, for right, uh, Honorable Deputy Prime Minister for that statement. Concentrating on DRC. DRC colleagues, I had the opportunity to go travel to DRC to look for possible markets to support my constituency. But in the process, I met the customs in charge. And he told me that he's worried because based on what he was clearing, using the roads we're trying to work on, the Kenyan items were more than ours. So as we take this opportunity, I think the ministry responsible for trade needs to do something so that we can encourage our people to take advantage of this market. Some of the key elements which I was told and I saw moving, construction equipment, construction related items, which we have a lot, sugar, oil. I think we need to come back and start working seriously to ensure that our production and take advantage of the parish model so that we are able to take advantage of this market, which is about 55, 55 billion USD. That's a lot. If we can only tap 10%, it will change us. Let's target and use this potential market and go back and increase our production to take advantage of that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Honorable Nzima, I thought you are your local government. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I want to thank uh, the first Deputy Prime Minister for the statement. I also want to take this chance to congratulate Congo, DRC Congo, for having joined the East African uh, community. Uh, there is no doubt that uh, the joining of DRC uh, into the East African, I mean, the, the coming of the RSC into the East African community expands the membership. And in a way, this also expands our market. As members have already said, I don't want to repeat those issues that it gives us a very big opportunity in terms of market and other aspects. However, right on the speaker, I want to make some few observations 
in terms of our interaction with other countries that are already members of East African Cooperation. Madam Speaker, of late, we realized there are a lot of restrictions. Much as today we are trying to jubilate that Congo has joined and therefore our membership has expanded. And in a way, uh, the market has also expanded. But uh, I've been seeing cases where there are restrictions of products within the East African market. The members who have been exporting milk to other East African countries, which I may not mention, these have come under restrictions. There are also those who have been trading in, in, in eggs, sending eggs to our neighbors. So sometimes we can come as a corporation, but we don't adhere to the protocols. The meaningful engagement and interaction we are supposed to enjoy, we don't experience them. I think it's a, common, it's a very clear thing. Recently, we have a situation where some borders were closed, and these are borders of member states. So when we bring these countries and we come together as a body, it must be a meaningful uh, interaction on all, on all, all grounds. But it will be a very absurd that we have members. At the end of the day, there's a lot of restriction. At some stage, our sugar was not expected in other countries within East Africa. So you wonder, what is the cooperation about? So yes, we have admitted Congo, but it will take a lot of effort to ensure that we move on the, on the, on, on the same page. I thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, thank you so much. Of course, it is, between, it is upon us to make sure that we move on the same page. Once we agree that we need a people-centered, market-driven co operation, cooperation, we'll do it and we'll be at the same page. And we must look at this as an opportunity, an opportunity to the country. And uh, of course, all this is provided for under Article 7 of the East African Community. Yes. Paul. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Right Honorable Speaker. I would want to add my and the Minister for East African uh, Community uh, for the presentation she has made. Uh, this parliament should welcome uh, DRC into the East African Community. DRC is one of the largest uh, countries in Africa with so much potential. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, before COVID period came and the closures of Katuna border, Uganda had a very positive balance of trade with DRC, getting in almost uh, $70 million. Uh, currently, we are not taking advantage of that market. I would want to thank the president and the UPDF for maintaining the strategic security in DRC to allow us uh, to do trade. Uh, because without peace and security, it's not possible to do trade. As already been mentioned by our colleague, uh, the, the government of Uganda is preparing a road from Uganda into DRC. Uh, last time, the Minister of State for Trade said we should take full advantage of that opportunity to push in Ugandan goods uh, into the DRC uh, so that we can actually grow our markets. The president of, is always talking about us having a bigger market. And I think DRC provides that opportunity for us. Uh, today, Minister for East Africa, we have made progress towards our integration by dealing matters of common external tariff and Recently, we are working on non-tariff barriers because, right honorable speaker, there was a lot of delays of our transport between Kenya and Uganda because the Kenyan policemen, for example, would put roadblocks everywhere on the way. I think that has been sorted. We would then move towards a monetary union and then finally a political federation. I hope that with the consequent meetings that you will be having, uh, we should make progress uh, towards those areas 
so that in a, a not distant future, Uganda will be able to go towards a monetary union and then finally our political integration. I want to thank you, right on speaker. Thank you, Solomon. Thank you, right honorable speaker. Right honorable speaker, I want to thank the honorable minister for East African Affairs for the wonderful statement she has made. Right honorable speaker, I only want to make three statements, right honorable. Right honorable, we had our border with Rwanda closed and yet we are in the East African community and we have a very close working relationship. What plans do we have with the new admission of Congo to the East African community to avoid such happenings? Because when these borders are closed and we are already working together, we are in the East African community, it is the local population that suffers, businesses end up collapsing. Now that we are expanding the East African community, what strategy? Diplomatical, are we going to use to avoid such? Because at that time, the Minister of East Africa ought to have really come out to support the two countries to see that the borders, Uganda and Rwanda, is open. Then, two, what are the trade and the economic achievements and benefits that Uganda? as a country is going to get from the admission of the Democratic Republic of Congo, the East African community. Because, you know, in my language, they say everyone is selfish. I always look at Uganda first. What are we going to benefit so that we really support and promote the admission of the Democratic Republic of Congo to the East African community? Because the most important thing that we should be looking at uh, the potential and the opportunities for trade and how we can improve our country and the income and the GDP of the Republic of Uganda. Right over speaker, I beg to submit. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, members, the admission of DRC is going to enable the export-oriented economy for the partner states, which will even enable free movement of goods, persons, services, labor, capital, information, and technology. Those are some of the things that we expect to benefit out of this admission. And of course, there are so many opportunities that we can get out of this admission. The, the DRC, as you've heard, the infrastructure. Yesterday, you were discussing about the infrastructure, infrastructure of DRC. That if we had a road that, that is connecting you, is in our business. That is one of the reasons. Kavanda. Kavanda Soy. Thank you very much. Of course, Honorable Sirwani copied from me, but he didn't bring out the point very well. <laughs> but Madam Speaker, I want to thank the minister for the statement. But to add on what Honorable Sirwani was saying, the other day we had issues with Rwanda. And none of the member states of the East African community could come up to mediate the two countries. It was Angola that had to take the initiative to mediate the two countries. Who did the mediation? Angola, the conflict. It was none of the member states. I want to know, the, with another general, I, I got some information from here, but I want of this integration, apart from sending ministers, sending members of parliament, we did not see any sitting at the East African Legislative Assembly talking about these issues. We have had issues with Kenya, 
every day you hear the minister is quarreling with Kenya, members of parliament are quarreling with Kenya because of our eggs, because of maize, our products. What is the importance? We understand this community was revived in 2000, but we have not had tangible benefits as a country, apart from sending ministers and sending members of parliament into the legislative assembly of this community. Soy. Soy. Madam Speaker, thank you so much. Allow me to congratulate you upon your election as a speaker. You know, Madam Speaker, we have been addressing you as a speaker, but let me address you now as the real speaker because you have been elected as the speaker of this parliament. Madam Speaker, I've been sad a bit because the other day I did not pay tribute to my friend the late Right Honorable Jacob Alanya, let me pay tribute to, to him. And I think he's safe in heaven. And I think he's a leader there as well. He has been my friend. So otherwise, Madam Speaker. The, the Honorable Soy was not in the country. And he did not have time to pay tribute. And he, he's still mourning. Thank you, Madam Speaker. <laughs> yeah, we are still mourning. Uh, I would like to thank uh, the Right Honorable Kadaga, the Minister for ESC, for the elaborate report on the admission of ESC, of, uh, of uh, DRC. And Madam Chairperson, I would like the members to understand that Chemasuetia is the deputy chairperson for East African Community Affairs Committee of Parliament. Madam Speaker, with us, especially from the borders, ours is about our feet only moving to the, towards the other side of the border. Ours is not about the formalities. Mine is about crossing to Kenya, meet my relatives there as we leave right on Rabokadaga to do the formalities. But before even you do the formalities, we are already in the other side of Kenya. So it is a good blessing as well that we have really admitted a big country. But one thing that I would like to request government, let's handle this baby carefully. DRC is now a new baby. The behavior of having non-tariff barriers. Me, I cross the border through Malabo most of the time. But the question of temporal exportation of vehicles, especially when you are using your car, it is a challenge. You take almost four to five hours in Malaba border, Urbusia. This is a challenge. You have Kenya Revenue Authority first. You have National Intelligence Services. You have Administration Police. You have the regular police. You have all those ones. Why don't we deal away with this and we have only uh, Kenya Revenue Authority, Uganda Revenue Authority handling the issues, other than having talking of one stop border and yet it is not there. Madam Speaker, I know Right on Rabakadaga has challenges in terms of the movement moving within ESC. And I know you will have now more challenges because you are, we have now admitted a big country. Now, the other yesterday we were handling the Can MPS. Can you conclude? The other people yes, want yes. to speak. We were handling MPS yesterday for Miyaka. And we will be handling the appropriation very soon. My request, right on Rabo, a speaker, is that the ministry or the minister for Miyaka should be having an helicopter, not a vehicle. And there is that, that request, by the way, because how do we handle these challenges when we are using, when she will be using a vehicle around is instead of having, having a helicopter? And as parliamentarians, we should have that consideration. It has to be a serious one, by the way. She should have a helicopter. 
Thank you so much. Thank you. Now I'm talking to the lady behind you. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. This is my maiden speech since you ascended to that seat. So congratulations are in order on the behalf of the people of Mora District. Stella Isodo is my name. I want to appreciate the report by the Right Honorable Deputy Prime Minister. The admission of Congo uh, contributes to a population of over 300 million, and this will contribute to the expansion of the market, the regional market. My point is just about the investment onto the infrastructure and specifically the road network. This would be the time we would be talking about the standard gauge railway so that uh, the common market, uh, we, we would all be able to contribute to the common market. Other East African communities have been able to work on the red network and the Uganda had also started that process. So I beg to submit that we, we need to put more attention, more investment into the standard gauge railway. I beg to submit. Thank you, Agnes. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. And I would like to thank the Prime Minister, the Deputy Prime Minister for the, the statement. I'm moving on the issue of uh, the market. We are all excited about the new market of DRC. But what are we taking to DRC? When we look at the other East African countries, the trade has largely been uh, driven by the private sector. Being guided by market forces and protectionism of other uh, member states. I would like to implore our government to play a more active role in a tangible negotiations such that we have a structured, more structured economic relationship with the DRC market. For instance, we are talking about products only, but DRC being a French speaking country, there could be market for English teachers. Will somebody take a lead to negotiate this deal that can Uganda export English teachers? How many English teachers does DRC need? If, English, if DRC needs 50,000 teachers, then we go ahead and train the 50,000 teachers and create jobs. So we should look at the human resource, but we should look at a more structured way of dealing with DRC. The private sector, the East African community, the Ministry of Trade have a central role to play in this. If this is not done on time, you get stations where our people feel left out and you feel the agitations like what happened in Brexit. Thank you. Silo. Right, Honorable Speaker, I want to appreciate you for the opportunity, but also appreciate our dear Minister for East Africa. Thank you for the report. I want to congratulate DRC. They have come at the right time, and I'm so happy and excited about it. If I told there is any country that I have not visited and I would love to visit, it is the DRC. And in particular, like in Shasha, I would love to be there. The right honorable speaker, this parliament has a big role in the realistic and real integration of East Africa. If we are talking about widening and deepening the integration, this parliament has a bigger role to play. One, we must be able to allocate enough resources to our committee on ESC. Two, the ministry needs to be supported. Economically, we need to give them finances. Let's give the ministry enough money so that they're able to do what they need to, to do. Madam Speaker, we have a forum in this uh, parliament on ESC affairs. 
we look at forming uh, similar forums in the EAC partner states. Because I want to believe this widening and deepening will work well if we do it on a parliament to parliament approach. And uh, right now, we are planning to have an orientation for that forum, a serious one. I know my chair will be communicating later on that. This is very, very important because we want to focus on the four pillars and build a team of champions. Those who understand the customs union, those who are understanding the federation, and those who are handling the issues of the monetary union. But one attribute that I want to appreciate, first of all, so far, the passports. They have already started issuing the East African passports. Personally, I'm transforming into that. So if somebody is asking about the benefits, that's one of them. They are starting now to flow. It is our duty to widen and deepen this integration. The next game should be in Kinshasa. We are ready to go for sports there, Madam Speaker. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I would like to begin by congratulating the DRC for joining the East Africa community. Madam Speaker, whereas we are welcoming the East Africa community, we are, we are welcoming a DRC into the East Africa community, we need to be aware about the fragility, how fragile DRC Congo is, the insecurity in DRC Congo. That said, Madam Speaker, I would like to request that uh, our East Africa representative, the, 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 the Minister for East Africa Affairs, need to take our message about security, bolstering security in, this, in, in East Africa. When you look at what is happening between Uganda and Sudan particularly, the inhuman nature of how the traders that leaves Uganda and go to Sudan to do business are being mistreated. It is alarming. Such kind of act should not extend to DRC Congo. That is my major concern, Madam Speaker. Otherwise, we are grateful that we have received one of the country with a lot of resources joining East Africa community, and we are proud of that. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Honorable, Right Honorable Minister. Much as we talk about the free movement of goods, the persons, services, we need to look at the issues of South Sudan. It is real alarming when you go for that meeting. Yes, uh, Betty. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, by the current trend, I soon expect to see Nigeria or Tunisia <coughs> as part of East Africa. From a region, take a lab. There are so many things that bring us together, Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania. We started with Rwanda. It was agreeable, at least with Burundi. Then we picked Sudan. Now we have picked the LRC. Madam Speaker, we have an association here called the WOPA. In the WOPA, we have some men who are members of WOPA. But the time the men become bigger in the number than the women, then Europa would have lost the very purpose it was formed for. Where we are now, countries that had never been part of the original East Africa are outnumbering the countries that were the original, had the original concept of East Africa. You see, we have now Rwanda and Burundi, we have DRC, we have Sudan, and very soon, Egypt. <laughs> then, East Africa would have changed it into just a club. And the unfortunate thing is that it is becoming a club for presidents, not even the parliaments, Madam Speaker. There was no one day 
we sat here to discuss about the application by Congo to join us in East Africa. At least you would have seen, heard the same being discussed by the assembly, the East African parliament, at least. And the people, the East African parliament cooperation is supposed to be about the people. But Madam Speaker, the people in these countries have, don't know anything about this community. For us, we are starting to talk about political unity, even to the extent that we would make a single government and a single currency. All of that is now lost. Madam Speaker, people from my area who go to, to Tanzania as teachers are made to have a working permit. And as soon as it expires, even for one day, they are brought back and you know, some of them even arrested. I want to request you, Madam Speaker, that if it pleases you, you set a particular day when the Minister for East Africa will come here and on that day, we talk about the, the teacher of East Africa. How we can bring in the people, because at the end of the day, it should be the people. And I wish to know, if we choose to go for a single currency and a single government, is DRC ready to be part of that? If they are not ready. But they are now outnumbering us to the extent that they can now connive and make decisions against we who are in the original East African bloc. Madam Speaker, I also want to talk about the Kalamoja thing. We were told here that the problem that is affecting us and frustrating our efforts in Kalamoja are people who come from Tudukana. But we are already in a community. Honorable uh, numbers. Uh, we did not say they are the people coming from Turkana. Don't bring. Uh, Madam, Madam Speaker, my words cannot cause this harmony because you, we you, are one of Kenya. You know me, I'm from uh, there, so we know our people. I'm and as I'm good as a Kenyan under the East African community, so they cannot say why does somebody in a foreign country talk about us? We are one country almost. Madam Speaker, what I wanted you to say is Betty, there is, there Betty, is a suspicion, Madam Speaker. Betty, we are not one country. That is one. These are different states. We are only in an integration. Much obliged. I will not repeat it again. That we are working towards that. Madam Speaker, I want to know how colleagues how sister countries in the East Africa, what do they think about having joint operations in issues that are cross-border? Madam Speaker, when we had the locust problem, the locusts came, they said they are in Kenya, and they were just saying, they might move to Uganda. Instead of us going to join Kenya and attack the locusts from Kenya, we waited for our day, until the locusts move from Kenya to Uganda. This is one thing I think we should change, Madam Speaker, that whatever happens to us, and we have this infrastructure of the East African community, that we can, can, work, can conclude? That we work about some of these problems together. Lastly, Madam Speaker, I want on behalf that the people in these countries are made to meet and that we fight. We don't allow the East African community to grow into just a club of the big men in the Great Lakes region. Thank you. I can give you is that Nigeria cannot be part of the East African of the treaty for the establishment of the east african community it provides that 
there should be a geographical proximity. And uh, that is not even about to come with Nigeria. Yes, the first line. Dennis, you have talked. So sit. Thank you so much, right honorable speaker. First and foremost, I, I would like to congratulate you upon that seat. I'm Kayanga Barada Watongola, Member of Parliament, Kamuli Municipality. Right honorable speaker, students went to Kenya to take a dead body. It was so hard for them to pass through the border, but those ones coming from Kenya to Uganda, it was so easy. I'm seeking clarification from the minister kindly to at least put some tight laws in Uganda, because when you go to Kenya, Rwanda, and Tanzania, it is not easy at all. But okay. in Uganda, they just enter. OK. Thank you so much, Right Honorable. Thank you. Members, as I said, it was for 10 minutes. He has gone for 30 minutes. I am only having him and leader of opposition, and we close. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. You will debate on the next item. Madam Speaker, I join colleagues in uh, welcoming Congo to the East African community. Um, there's a lot that we can do with Congo. There's advantages that come with it. Congo by land area is about 10 times the size of Uganda. Their population is more than twice ours. So there's a lot that we certainly can be able to benefit. Um, Madam Speaker, there's things that we, we must be able to fix for us to optimize this integration. In 2010, ESC launched the common market for goods, labor, and capital. But Madam Speaker, it's still a challenge today for our goods, for our sugar, for our eggs, and so on, to make it to certain markets in this African community. It's still a challenge, Madam Speaker, for labor to cross over, for Ugandans to go and be able to operate in other countries. We need to fix these things for this integration to be able to make sense, Madam Speaker. We said that we can be able to travel with our national ID. Countries in the East African community for which that has not been actualized yet. It's an impediment. Can we fix these things? Finally, Madam Speaker, for any country to properly benefit from an integration such as this one, you have got to have quite a bit to offer. We still have a challenge with production in our country. There is local still net importers as a country. Maybe time has come for us to begin to focus on these local manufacturers so that we can have a lot to export to these countries within the community. We tend to focus quite a bit on foreign investors, and it's okay, we need them, but sometimes we, we are focusing a lot more on the neighbor's child and forgetting ours. These local manufacturers are saying, please enable us, the cost of production is high. Help us waive some of the taxes the way you're doing to these foreign investors. We are waiving taxes, we are giving them money, and, and so on. So for us to be able to benefit from the region, we must have what to export. So let's aid these local manufacturers, Madam Speaker. Somebody wants to give you a Yeah, thank you very much, Honorable Colleague, for giving. Leader of the opposition. <laughs> this ginger man likes smuggling. You're not even near the border. <laughs> Thank you, Eto Lo Speaker. I think I, I, I suppose the, the, the smuggling language has been made alive to the border openings that are part of the conversation. Panadol is not in the house, at least. <laughs> Thank you, Eto Lo Speaker. I'd like to 
thank the first deputy prime minister for the statement that qualifies to this house of parliament the status of our neighbors in the 10th parliament there is a, a comrade who is still part of this parliament as part of impeaching his uh, confidence a member referred to him as a Congolese and uh, he was indeed impeached and they could not even submit I guess now that the admission of the DRC will make him more comfortable and do not call it an insult anymore because uh, eventually we are brothers and sisters but on the speaker Part of what is enduring to this cooperation is what the Honorable Member from Mokono submitted, albeit in jest, namely that cooperation must be of peoples, not of politicians per se. And when the people embrace cooperation, then the attendant legislations become rituals. In one of the, I was in one of the capitals uh, a few weeks back, and one of the friends I was meeting referred to Kampala as the biggest bar in East Africa, uh, because they can trot in and out of Kampala with utmost ease over the weekend. For me, that was a bit of warmth that probably we appreciate this more than uh, our other neighbors. But part of the discomfort that comes with uh, cooperation is because the political class that engenders it does not eventually bring to bear the peoples. And I believe uh, through the Minister for East Africa, who is a veteran over the politics of the region needs to probably invite colleagues across to involve, for example, uh, the, um, the, the traders associations, the Uganda Chamber of Commerce, the uh, other traders associations. I have been to Kinshasa twice, but when you go there, one of the biggest markets for our people here are informal jobs, the mechanics, they're hardly there. It's very difficult to find a mechanic in the DRC to fix a simple, uh, you know, to troubleshoot a vehicle easily. And we have really so many of them. But for you to be able to, to, to give up to sensitize our people on these opportunities on all sides of the borders so that we do not end up with some of the challenges we have seen in SADC, where people, for example, in South Africa, look at their black brothers and sisters as endangering their own survival, instead of looking at them as brothers and sisters with whom they can actually cooperate and change their lives. Right on the speaker, the political class has a duty, and uh, that it largely in is inviting and sensitizing the common person about these opportunities and they offer a platform and make it easy for individuals to and business people to go and cross over. We have so many communities across borders, you know, and I hope in the long term this cooperation will go a long way beyond trade, finance, to even go into deeper political cooperation to interest ourselves not influence, but interest ourselves in democratizing entirely the East African bloc. That, for instance, not a single party in East Africa would go and organize an election and rig it and beat its people and the others cheer them up and turn up for swearing in in the long term. That we, call, we have common values for democracy. We have common values for uh, improving the lives of our people. Common values on human rights then it will make even greater sense. I thank you, President Speaker, and I hope this arrives a new beginning for the... so much. Yes, Procedure. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, uh, I'm very 
very excited about the, the admission of the DRC into the East African community. Because having a population of 300 million speaks volumes as far as international trade is concerned. So we are going to be a power to reckon with. However, uh, this statement which came in uh, item two on page eight, which says that um, the community uh, as the summit of the community has already adopted that English, French, and Kiswahili be adopted as the official languages in the new arrangement. I would want to know whether the Ministry of the East African, whether the Ministry of the East African Community has put up a budget for the purpose of setting up training centers so that in Uganda we can now start learning French and um, French and Kiswahili because it will soon be adopted as the official language. Uganda is disadvantaged because in the East African region, Kenya uses Kiswazili, so is Tanzania, so is Rwanda, so is Burundi, but Uganda doesn't popularly use Kiswahili. So we are very much behind and disadvantaged. So I want to um, know whether the money has been included for the purpose of training the population uh, in these uh, three languages so that we can benefit in trading in the within the community. I thank you, right, Rambo Speaker. Thank you so much, Honorable Hana. Hana Minister. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Members, for your comments, for your inquiries, for your advice. Uh, I thank you for supporting the Forum for East Africa and to say that uh, definitely there are going to be new opportunities. I'll also answer the Honorable Mayday on the issue of education. Uh, I expect to get English teachers to go and teach uh, English in their countries. I expect that uh, if in the next six months they set a plan for the common market protocol, its implementation, we shall see a channel of where to enter. And I'll be talking about the common market a little bit later. Uh, on the non compliant countries, I can assure you I'm um, one of those who's not going to tolerate countries uh, taking advantage and having a free ride. Actually, last, uh, about uh, three weeks ago, I had a rude experience. We had gone for a meeting in Arusha, but uh, for over six hours, we were not sitting. Then I, 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 I went to the headquarters, I said, why are we not meeting? They said, oh, you see, two countries have not signed the report, so we cannot come to call the meeting. So when I found out who are the two, it was Sudan, South Sudan, and Burundi. So I said, but how can someone who has not paid subscription Hold us at ransom. Let's go for the meeting. If they don't want to come, they are pro let's go and pass the budget. Let's use the, but they came. So I asked the, my cabinet uh, colleague, why do you speak in these meetings? Said, you see, you know, I said at the next council meeting, the issue of sanctions must be on the agenda. I'm not going to narrate Uganda taxpayers paying money and have others having a free ride. So this one, I'm not going to allow. Uh, the visa regime, yes, I'm hoping that uh, once they fully join, we shall be able to engage them on the issue of the visas, as we've done with the others. But on members, let me just say that uh, the issue of sovereignty is still important. This, the man says, I'm the, the head of the Republic of Kenya. I elected by the Kenya people. I'm the head of the Republic of Burundi, elected by the Burundi. Yes, we have friendship. We are in a club. But I cannot direct. So some of those issues we still need to, to discuss. The other area I want to talk about is the issue of the opportunities for Uganda. And I'm one of those who I'm on record even here complaining about the lethargy with which we as Ugandans take on opportunities. When South Sudan was liberated, it was where the Uganda forces 
that support in South Sudan. But within a month, Kenya Commercial Bank was in Yuba. Today, this morning when I talked, I talked about which countries have a border with the DRC. I said all of them except Kenya. Today, Equity Bank, KCB, and DRC. We are here. Yeah. So what I want to uh, pledge to this house, I'm going to lead the trade delegation, a very serious trade mission, to ensure that uh, we get the opportunities as quickly as possible. On uh, in Ozima, uh, the restrictions, the injuring our products. But recently, I had I was on the spot when Uganda uh, interfered with the goods in transit to Congo. I had to answer questions: Why has Uganda breached international law by grabbing the fish going to Lake Tukana? So all of us do these things, but we need to streamline them. And we shall continue to speak about the non-adherence. I think we should first clean our house before we also talk about the others. Uh, when Omara was giving advice, when Surany, border closure. Now, what do you do? And one of our commanders was asking that, why did nobody say anything? How do you bring two heads of state? You're a minister, so you president, so, and so you sit here. You also sit here. Tell me why are you quarreling? <laughs> yes. So it takes, uh, I think, another head of state to be able to do that. You know, they, we have hierarchy. Yes, at their level. So, yes, we were bothered. Even here, we talked about it many times. But who could actually move it? So, there are some of those things that happen in that way. Then, uh, no, Commander, what are the benefits? I saw you during the Yala Games. You stayed in the Maria Hotel. You paid the East African community rate. The rate you paid was for East African. The Arabs were paying something different. So that's one of the advantages. Uh, oh. <laughs> Recently, I also uh, learned for the first time that uh, when a Ugandan is in uh, Kenya, they must drive to the border every three months to renew their entry with their car. I mean, you drive four times a year to the border just to show that you have entered the country with your car, and yet you work in Kenya. So it's something I want to address at the meeting. I didn't know it. there are people who came to visit me in Easter and said, you know, every th three times a year we drive to the border to drive out and drive in to show that we have arrived. So I'm, I'm going to handle that. And I had an interesting one with the border communities in a, near the, in Amaingo. The border border people were being stopped from crossing the border. To allow the border border. Said for us, the border border is our integration. The cars are not our business. We are border riders. Our integration is to cross the border with the motorcycles. So I told the Secretary General, deal with that. And he has dealt with it. So now it's no longer a problem. So if I, if I hear any more, I'll handle them. Uh, on our voice or door, the infrastructure. Uh, yes, we need the infrastructure, and we are going to uh, continue working on it. What's the private sector doing? As I said, I'm going to be leading a delegation to the DRC to see what opportunities we can, we can pick up. On our Bogon, I really want to thank you for the support. We need more money. I think that means it's one of the poorest in the country, but let, let, let's have more money so that we can do uh, a lot more work. Uh, DRC, fragility, yes. But there's nothing we can do. You know, these are our neighbors. They have been our neighbors since 1884. We can't change them. But let us help them to organize themselves. Maybe coming uh, now formally. We have been with them informally, but maybe now that they are coming formally, we shall have more space to, to assist them. Now, now, Nambozi. There is no way Nigeria can, where has she gone? She's not even here. <laughs> there is no way Nigeria or Tunisia can become part of the AAC. There's a lot of proximity in the treaty. There's a lot of proximity in the treaty, so we don't expect that. But also, uh, how can countries come together without their leaders? A Muchiga cannot just go to the other Muchiga on the other side and say, let us make an agreement. There has to be a government. 
So yes, the leaders are talking, but uh, let us also do more for the people. They cannot do it on their own. Uh, when I want to go about the ambulance, uh, I, I didn't know that you had a problem with uh, moving an ambulance, but you are crossing a border with another country. So I think there are protocols there to be handled, but we shall see, we shall check and see what are, what are the reciprocal arrangements. When I was saying, you are very interested in the common market. Yes, let me just say that uh, would they, we expect that if the, the Congolese and the others agree, the freedom of movement, of capital, of service, of goods, if they do agree, that will simplify our lives. But more important, the right to residence and the right to establishment, all those are part of the common market protocol. So let's hope that uh, we shall work together on that one. Uh, the national ID is real, it is quite annoying that, uh, especially in Tanzania, they do, uh, you travel to Kenya, you're okay with your national ID, but once you reach Tanzania, you're arrested. This morning I was in a meeting where I was told that traders have been arrested to serve us for their list so that we can handle it. I'm going to discuss with my minister on the other side. Leader of opposition, uh, there are many uh, non government organizations involved in the collaboration. The East African Business Council, this morning I was with the East African Law Society, the East African Local Government Association, the Youth Ambassadors. Yesterday, I commissioned the University Games for East Africa. So there are many, many uh, things going on that we could uh, build on. But we need more money. I don't have my money in the budget for sensitization. So we need uh, more support on that area. On uh, Abogwal, I'm due to present to cabinet, a cabinet paper on how we can now incorporate Swahili because it has been uh, optional, but I think it will now have become both compulsory and examinable right from primary, uh, primary level. Equally French, it has been optional. It should now become compulsory and examinable because it will be a national language. So I'm taking that to the cabinet in a, in a short time. And then after that, we shall come back and uh, request for support on uh, how to move it. So that's both Swahili and, and French. We are going to work uh, on the same uh, arrangement. But in the meantime, on our members, I didn't learn French in school, I learned it after. So you can get, really get in touch with the Lyons Francais and start doing some studies. Right now I'm, I'm doing uh, learning Swahili. I'm not doing it in the class. So this is possible. If you, uh, I had written to the class some time back to say that we should organize Swahili lessons. If you're interested, my ministry can facilitate that. So thank you very much, speaker. Members, thank you very much. Thank you so much for the comprehensive response and members you've seen and you've had the benefits that we'll get out of uh, our integration with the DRC. We want to thank you so much and continue fighting for your country. Next item. Item five, bills second reading, the physical planners registration bill 2021. Uh, Honorable Minister, Madam Speaker, the physical planners registration bill 2021 be read for the second time. Thank you. Is the bill seconded? Is the bill seconded? Seconded by Silva Yi Bunyoro. Uh, William and by the whole house. Come on to, would you, would you love to speak to your motion? Uh, Madam Speaker, bill is to provide for establishment of a physical planners registration board to provide for the powers and functions of the board and provide for the registration of physical planners to also look at the disciplinary procedures for the physical planners and other related matters. Madam Speaker, as we all know currently, there is no legal framework regulating physical planners in Uganda. Unlike other professionals, e.g. the accountants, the lawyers, 
surveyors, engineers, and doctors who have governing bodies uh, that regulate them. So the absence of a legal framework has compounded the practice of preparation of a bit of uh, physical planning and uh, an ESCO planning practices and violation of minimum physical planning standards, rampant abuse and use of environmental sensitive areas. is happening in some of these uh, places. So therefore the bill is intended to provide the legal framework to regulate the practice and activities of physical planners, separate qualified planners from quack physical planners to set and monitor the standards for physical planners to reorganize urban development in the country and reap from the benefits of urbanization process, uh, which are numerous. Madam Speaker, I commend the House to consider this bill so that we can uh, move forward the urbanization process of our country. I beg to move. Thank you so much, Honorable Minister, Acting Honorable Minister of Lands, Housing and Urban Development. I want to thank you for, for moving the motion. And can I now invite the chairperson of fiscal infrastructure to present the committee report? Thank you, right honourable speaker and colleagues. Allow me lay on the table the minutes of the meetings of the committee. Please lay, thank you. Uh, right on our speaker and colleagues, allow me also lay on table the report of the committee. Thank you. Uh, allow me also lay on table the documents that we use to process this bill from all stakeholders. This is the file. Let's go. Right on our speaker, a report on the committee of, on physical infrastructure on the physical planners registration bill 2021. We have the introduction, the background, I will not go to that, the methodology, the report, we consulted the many stakeholders, including Minister of Lands, who are the, the, the owners of the bill, Uganda Institute of Physical Planners, Association of Physical Planners in Uganda, Architect Registration Board, Uganda Society of Architects, and Independent Physical Planners presented by Dr. Wilson Kayum, received and considered a written submission from Shelter Uganda Limited, Sign Ulita. Mirembe, Luce, and Murabi Esther, who are individual stakeholders based in Imbari, meaning the bill was widely consulted. Preliminaries. The bill complied with gender equity. It also complied with the sustainable development goals. Therefore, I will straight go to Committee observations and recommendations. Committee, committee observation and recommendations. Functions. Functions. One, functions of the physical planners relation board. The bill under clause three provides for functions of the physical planners registration board to do, do not include regulation of physical planning funds in Uganda. Yet, this area is currently unregulated. It observes that this is a loophole that creates a leeway for unprofessional persons purporting to be physical planners 
to practice an, an attack and to act. The committee rec recommends that the functions of the board should for the private physical planner planning firms in Uganda. Two powers of the physical planners education board. The committee observes that the bill does not explicitly provide for powers of the board. For purposes of clarity, the powers of the board must be clearly provided for in the law to include the following. One, to register and deregister physical planners. Two, to inspect work promises of physical planners. Three, to conduct and investigate or inquiry, inquiry, relevant, inquiry relevant the performance of its function. Four, to control, supervise, and administer the assets of the board. Five, to, re to regulate professional fees for physical planners. Six, to, to accredit institutions undertaking continued professional development programs for registered physical planners. And seven, to arbitrate physical planning matters that involve its members and its members and the other parties. The committee recommends that the bill be amended to provide for the powers of the board. Three, composition of the physical planners registration board. The bill under clause four provides for membership of the physical planners registration board to comprise of a chairperson, two persons from public service, three persons from private sector, and one person from academia, all of whom shall be physical planners. The committee observes that the physical planning is a multi-sectoral discipline that touches many faces of the, of, the, of the natural and beauty environment. It includes landscape, landscape professional, landscape professional, and agriculturalists, among others. The, the proposed composition of the board leaves no room for- Yes, there's a procedure matter. Uh, right, honorable speaker, I'm not rising up to interfere with the process, but just to confirm whether we have this in our iPads, because I've tried to check, I seem not to see. I don't know whether it's only me who's failing to see it, and yet this is a very important bill, very important report. We need your guidance. It is there. Madam Speaker, thank you very much. I don't think it's okay when we go through our iPads, the file is empty. And this is a very important bill that we need to really follow it quickly. Is it uploaded? Madam Speaker, we gave it to the clerk. It was the clerk assured me that the bill had been uploaded. I've seen one member reading there. It's okay. You're using your phone, you have it, meaning it is uploaded. Anna, what is there, Madam Speaker? The, the, name, the, the name of the bill is there. The, the name is there in the iPad, saying physical planning bill. But, but when you try to open, it is empty. It means it was not, it was not uploaded, Madam Speaker. Go, go to, to the technical person to open for you. I now understand where the problem is coming from. Please take it there. You know, Kumi, Kumi, Kumi Municipality, kindly, because I can open it from here. Kumi Municipality, kindly. You know, these things have just come today, so we may not be knowing how to use them. Kibed, have you seen? So why, why are other people not seeing Amuru? <laughs> Mine is opening. 
Uh, chair, continue. You know, Amur is only good for sugar. Thank you, right on, sugar our speaker. Uh, we are close the composition of the Corporate Suggestion Board, and we were at the committee observations that the physical planning is a multi sector discipline that touches many facets of the natural and beauty environment. It includes landscape professionals, water system professionals, architects, and the agriculturists, among others. The, the proposed composition of the board leaves no room for growth from the interdisciplinary interactions. The committee proposes that the composition of the of the physical planners relation B should be diversified to depict the multi sector nature of the profession so as to ensure balanced decisions. Number four, qualification of registrars of the board. The bill under clause six provides for the appointment of a registrar who should be the chief executive office of the board, but the committee observes that it is, does not provide for the person specific, the personal specifications of this officer. The committee recommends that the bill be amended to, pro, to provide for required qualifications of the, the registrar of the board. Five. The conditions and qualifications of, of re, for qualification for registration. Clause 11 of the bill provides that a person can register as a physical planner if they, if they are holders of bachelor's or postgraduate degree in urban and regional planning or as a qualification by whatever name called from a university or other institution recognized by the board and two years practical experience, practical experience and physical planning and physical plan and a physical planning assistant if they are holders of a diploma in urban planning, urban and regional planning, partial planning, physical planning, or other qualification by whatever name called from a university or institute organized by the board and two years experience obtained under supervision of a registered physical planner. The committee observes that for the physical planner to be referred to as a registered physical planner, it is important that in addition to the academic qualification, they accomplish an individual professional project under the supervision of a registered physical planner. This can be best da be done under physical planners uh, society where all graduates physical planners are eligible, eligible to membership and have opportunity for mentorship. The committee recommends that requirements for registration of physical planning therefore should include the following. One, a degree in physical planning. Two, completion of any individual professional project. Three, two years of practical experience in physical planning under the supervision of a registered physical planner. Physical planner, the committee also recommends that upon attainment of a requisite academic qualifications, physical planners and physical planning assistants should register with a society of physical planners as a graduate physical planners or graduate stroke graduate physical planning assistant. Six, inclusion of Uganda Institute of Physical Planners in the law. The bill, the bill presupposes that all members of the board, the bill proposes that all members of the board be persons registered with the Uganda Institute of Physical Planners incorporated under Company Act 20, 2012, registered in number, 203480 of two of 2015, all person nominated by REIT. The committee observes that the, the institute is a private company whose membership does not include all 
physical planners, therefore, any reference to it in the law is irregular. The committee recommends that in a, in a place of this private institute, the bureau should establish a society that brings together professional physical planners for purposes of, of association and mentorship. Seven, the disciplinary committee. The bureau under clause 18 established a disciplinary committee that comprises of chairperson and members appointed from among the members of the board. The committee is concerned that the proposed disciplinary committee is just a subcommittee of the board which could predispose it, it to conflict of interest. The committee recommends that the disciplinary committee should be, should be comprised of chairperson from the board and the other person from outside the board. Eight punishments. The committee observes that under clause 43, the punishment of a fine not exceeding 48 currency points or imprisonment not exceeding two years or both for offenses cited in the bill is not punitive enough, given that some of the offending activities cannot be deterred from the unlawful practice when the punishment is so lenient. The committee proposes that bill, the bill should increase the fine payable and an offender to 100 currency points or imprisonment not exceeding two years or both to deter potential offenders. Uh, right on our speaker, in conclusion, the committee recommends the bill be passed subject to the proposed amendments. I beg you to move. Thank you so much, Honorable Chair, for the good report and the committee members of infrastructure. Uh, do we have any member who has anything to say on the report before we go to committee stage? Honorable Naome. Thank you so much, Madam Speaker. I also take this opportunity to congratulate you for take and congratulate the women of Uganda for that uh, big achievement that we have in you. Madam Speaker, I would like to thank the committee uh, for the, the report, but also to look back and think about amending this bill and uh, put the proper a board in place for physical planners is very, very important for this country. Madam Speaker, this country created, I mean, this parliament created cities, but these cities, they are just, I think the name is cities, but they are not worth. Probably it's because we did not have the right body in place to give us the right people to, to do the physical planning of these cities. And Madam Speaker, if we just leave it like that, we are going to have slums within the cities uh, in, in, in these created uh, cities. Yesterday I was talking to the chairperson of trade because he comes from a city and I said, and this is supposed to be my city, if I go back home, said, why don't you look for a physical planner, a right one, and plan Mbarara City so that we can all be proud of it? And he said, ah, it is a little bit difficult, these councils, to enter them because it's, they belong to the local council. And this, some of these local councils, well, I don't demean them, but they don't look at the future of how these cities should come up. Leave alone even this Kampara. I always say that the buildings in Kampara are quarreling to each other. Because one is like this, another one, we don't have anything that is, you feel like it was not physically planned. So probably it is now time 
that you are coming up with this amendment, maybe this amendment of the bill will bring us a better board in place and maybe that board will help us to have good and future physical planners of this country. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you. Naomi. Members, we need to limit the debate because we'll be going to committee stage, which, uh, which is a little longer. Did, uh, tobacco. <laughs> Dr. Bedi. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. A man right. from the tobacco area. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, physical planning is a profession. You cannot propose to put on a board of a physical planners other professions. I'm hearing from the report the idea that uh, agriculturalists, I think, and other professionals are going to sit on a board of another profession to regulate them. That cannot happen. If physical planning is a profession, and I've seen in the bill, it is defined as a profession because you must have a degree in physical planning. So we cannot see a situation where Dr. Abed, uh, without any qualification in that area, sits on a board whose function is to regulate, is to, uh, you, you cannot uh, be involved in what you don't know. So Madam Chair, Madam Speaker, I want to propose that principle uh, of professions regulation. Uh, this board should be entirely left in the hands of the. There is information from Richard. Yes. Thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker. Wanda Richard is my name. Uh, I want to inform my Honorable colleague that in such planning, you need environmentalists, you need social workers, and many other professions. You cannot narrow it to only. So that's where we make many mistakes. I think we need other professionals on board. Thank uh, you. Thank you for the information. But you must, we must be aware that in the physical planning teaching, Whatever you are talking about. Further information from Bunyoro. Further information from Bunyoro. I thank you, right? To my brother, Dr. Abed. Uganda is a planning unit. And when we talk about physical planning, we are not only talking about the towns, we are also talking about land use planning. And we are planning for the entire country in so many aspects. So for us to say that we eliminate others and only concentrate on physical planners will not be right. And I've also seen many boards where other professionals are included and they add a lot of value. I thank you, Right Honorable. Right, thank you. Right Honorable Speaker. Physical planning, I want to emphasize this point. Physical planning is a profession. I am aware that Uganda, the entire country, is a planning area. People go to school, they graduate in this area. You cannot bring on board in their profession because all of you want to be involved in planning. If you want to be involved as a physical planner, go to school and study physical planning. That's the reason why people go to school. Honorable Abed, right. the physical planners board, are you only putting it in isolation that is only doing physical planning for the buildings 
or in totality. Uh, right, Honorable Speaker. Yes. This, I'm on this, the provisions in this bill. I'm not on the. Uh, let's hear from Attorney General. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. What uh, Honorable uh, Wanika is speaking of will be looked at and will be clearly dealt with by Clause 4. Clause 4 says, the board shall consist of seven members who shall be qualified physical planners appointed by the minister on such terms. So it's okay. This professional body is covered. What the, what the committee was speaking of, it did not want the board to appoint, the, the, to, uh, to be a subcommittee of uh, the disciplinary committee to be a subcommittee of the board to make it separate, but it is covered. The professionals in this, there's no amendment proposed by the committee on that. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. And uh, then the minister. Thank you very much, right honorable speaker. I want to thank the, the chairperson of the Fiscal Infrastructure Committee for the report. The problem, Madam Speaker, that we find in most of these cities, when you go to a city like Jinja, which was organized by the Indians, you find a very good city, very well organized because most of the physical planners that we have in this country, I don't want to mention names, but here in KCCA, we had a director, a whole director of physical planning who had studied agriculture. But because he had contested somewhere and people were negotiating for him, they took him to the president. The president decided to appoint him director of physical planning. How does a person who studied agriculture plan for a city? You go in the most, these urban centers, when you go to town councils, you find somebody who studied different things managing a city. How do you explain? You find congestion, that's why you find disorganized cities in Uganda because of employing people not on meritocratic grounds, but because someone is my brother. So the one who's handling the, 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 the process is my in-law. So you come and be here. Madam Speaker, to me, I think the problem in our country is appointing people who are not qualified for such positions. I beg to submit. Thank you. Honorable Minister. I think you, right honorable speaker, and I'd like to thank the chair and the committee for their report. It's a good report. Um, honorable colleagues, physical planning is actually a decentralized function. And when you go to these districts and cities, you'll find a planning unit, including the physical planner, the surveyor, the economist, the statistician, the, the population officer. Um, so I'm happy that we are now getting to a solution for some of the challenges we've been having. Collapsing buildings, people encroaching on road reserves, people building in wetlands, people um, you know, posing in, in, in the population as planners, and they actually demand for money and so on. So this bill is a good one. It will help us to solve a number of these problems in the local government. I just have two, three questions for the committee chairperson. Uh, Honorable chairperson, you're proposing diversifying the board and you, you've given us the reasons and you've heard the arguments given by Honorable Abdel. Um, in your proposal, are you also looking at uh, this board including a representative of the local government? Because this is where these planners uh, are mostly. Uh, secondly, the the proposal you are raising for a society of planners, 
My understanding is that the society is actually a member's organization. And then you're talking of them to be clear on who is going to certify the physical planner. Is it the board or is it the society you are proposing? And finally, when you look at the physical planner, it's not in isolation. They don't work in isolation. You have the surveyors, you have architects, you have the cartographers, you have the environment planners. Um, how do we ensure that in certifying and reg registering these planners, these other professionals are not left out? Thank you. Thank you, right, Honorable. Thank you. Yes, Honorable. Awichi Kabira Maido. Jen. Yes, Jen. Thank you so much, right, Honorable Speaker. For the purposes, I'm Jen Awichi, the woman MP of Kabramaido District. Somehow I want to disagree with my colleagues. My colleague, one is saying that the, the, planning, the planners are failing. the wrong appointments. To me, that's not the reason. What is affecting planning very much in both cities and municipalities is corruption. Much as the planner is aware that at this point, we need this kind of a building. As long as you have money to bribe the planner, to bribe the engineer, you are allowed to erect any form of building in any place in the district. Many times we have followed up with them. If we try to make up a follow up, it's a very big issue. So I want us to stop the thing of saying it's appointment. Anyone can do any job, but as long as you are committed and you love what you are doing, I thank you so much. Edi and Lob. Edi and Lob. Thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker. I want to thank the committee for the report. Right Honorable Speaker, the Honorable Minister of State for Nyoro said that Uganda is a planning unit. If you take Uganda as a planning unit, we must look at this squarely. We have seen policies that work in cities and towns that do not work in villages. You may find in a city, wetlands are being claimed. You find once a week, when you go to villages, people are being chased that they are in wetlands. So if we, look, if we take Uganda as a planning unit, we must look at policies that are universal. So as we look at this bill, we must look at it that it must be a bill that is going to, to affect all Ugandans, either negatively or positively. But we don't uh, pass policies that affect our people negatively. Right, Honorable Speaker, there is already, we need to, to integrate, integrate all policies. All ministries must be on board. I want to disagree with Dr. Abedewanika when he said that we must get all physical planners on the board. No, we need at least every profession on the board because there we benefit a lot. We shall have a combination of professions on the board. I want to thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Can I have a shadow this side? Then I conclude with my ministers here. Yeah. Thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker. Uh, in close two interpretations, on page one, we have uh, definitions of corporate member. You are now at committee level. My general comment is uh, that um, are you in agreement with the report? No, I'm not in agreement with the report, and that's the reason that I did not sign, because uh, under this, at the commencement of this act. 
And if you didn't sign, did you bring a minority report? I did not report? sign. Is there a minority report? I was not given opportunity to make a minority uh, report. Honorable Speaker, this report did not attract a minority report. Right, yeah. Honorable Speaker. Yeah. Uh -huh. For your information, we, we adapted it a strategy in this house that before we bring a report in the house we harmonize between the opposition and i think this is the first parliament really we harmonize between opposition and the ruling government and i am sure the attorney general has harmonized to the law where there is a disagreement we will sort it out thank you thank you right honorable speaker i i, I think my my, my member is forgivable. He wanted to raise the issues, but we had concurred the Honorable Kasule on the clause that was controversial, to which uh, they have conceded, and he is okay with it. And I think we are all right. We are ready to move with that. We are, we are forgiven you. Yeah, to, uh, to the next stage, right now, Speaker. Unless there's a new issue not agreed on to, but the issue had raised with me, and uh, I made it uh, known to the Attorney General and the Honorable Minister, we seem to be um, in, in agreement now on his uh, concerns. And I'd like to propose that uh, we, we move to um, committee stage. Committee level. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker. And I want to thank the Leader of Opposition and the Shadow Minister in charge of fiscal infrastructure, including fiscal planning. Right when I was speaker and members who have agreed, the member was coming to give his side why he had not signed the story and to also inform you that we have harmonized. So right when I was speaker in the spirit of capacity building, I would suggest and pray, pray to you that you give him the opportunity so that the member airs out his view and we all build ourselves as politicians. I thank Honorable, Honorable, Honorable Lumumba, <laughs> Justin. Once the leader of opposition has spoken, he has spoken. He's an alternative government. Yes, the Honorable, uh, Honorable Minister of Urban. Anita wants to say something. Honorable Anita wants to say something before the minister comes. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker and uh, Honorable colleagues. I have read the report, and uh, on page three of the report, the committee has done an excellent job of indicating the qualifications and the role of the physical planners. However, I, I wish that they had included and therefore like to propose that we should include penalties for physical planners in whose areas buildings collapse. Why I said this is because many a time when you engage in construction of a building, they give you the certification, but no supervision is done. And because of failure to supervise the construction works, there is usually lack of proper mansion work done on those construction buildings. And therefore, at the end of the day, the buildings collapse. And whom do you blame for that? The physical planner who did not supervise. And uh, yes, your right honorable speaker, I take the information. Right honorable speaker, the honorable Anita is my very good friend. Honorable members, you want us to live again in this place at night. Sincerely speaking. Okay, I beg, Madam Speaker, that I give this information in the spirit of making sure that we have a formidable law. And uh, I was just trying to give information that there may be a difference between what the physical planners do and what the structural engineers do. 
So mm. I thought it would be very important that we understand it. Maybe the physical planners deal with the issue of land. Where do we put yes, the judges? Get at the form. Thank you. So we are sharing information as comrades. That Honorable is get, speaker, that more is get information. At the form. More that information. is get at the form. That right, is get at the form. I obliged because it's yes, just a and I've just seen it. I Anita, you on the microphone. Anita, can you conclude? Yes, right, honorable speaker. I therefore like to thank them that it has been catered for. It's there. The penalty. Honorable Bahati, thank you so much for uh, investment. Uh, Madam Speaker, I just wanted to thank members who have supported the bill and also to make one clarification as we move into the committee stage that there is already a National Physical Planning Board that looks at the physical issues, rather physical planning issues of the country. This particular bill is reg registration and controlling, uh, penalizing the physical planners themselves. Like you look at accountants, you look at lawyers, you look at doctors, so we are now looking at the practitioners and making sure that we conclude. So I think, uh, Madam Speaker, we seem to be, the House seem to be ready to enter into uh, the, 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 the committee Procedure. stage. Thank you. Honorable members, I now put a question that the bill entitled the Fiscal Planners Registration Bill 2021 be read for the second time. Those in favor say unto the contrary nay. There is have it. The Physical Planners Registration Bill 2021, Bill's Committee Stage. Clause one. I put a question that clause one stands part of the bill. Those in favor say unto the contrary nay. The eyes have it. Clause two. Close to Madam Chair interpretation. A definition of a corporate member. Replace the definition of a corporate member with the following, with the following. Corporate member means a person who, A, at the commencement of this act, possesses a degree in physical planning or other physical planning related qualification with 10 years working experience, as a physical planner in the public service. Or B, after the commencement of this act attains 10 years experience of practicing as a registered physical planner and is a holder of a certificate of recog recognition as such issued by the society. Justification to ensure that a corporate member has the required experience and the qualification and is recognized by the society which issued the certificate of recognition. B. B. Definition of institute. Delete. Definition of institute. Justification. Uganda Institute of Physical Planners is a private company with individual shareholders the law should not be enacted to take care of private interests. C, registered physical planner. Redraft the definition of the phrase registered physical planner as follows. Registered physical planner means a person whose name is duly entered into the register and for the purposes of 
Part four of this act includes any person permitted to practice under section 13, justification. The redraft makes the definition it clear in terms of who, re, who a registered physical planner is. D, definition of society. Insert a new definition of the word society immediately after definition of the word registrar as follows. Society means the society of professional physical planners established under this act. Justification, this is a consequential to the amendment for the establishment of the society of professional physical planners of Uganda. Honorable Minister, Attorney General. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Um, we, would, we accept uh, much of the committee's, uh, with just committee's recommendations with a few amendments. The amendment to corporate member to read at the commencement of this act possesses a degree in physical planning and other physical planning related qualifications with 10 years working experience as a physical planner to stop there and remove in public service so that we can take care of people in private and public service. Opposition. Right, Honorable Speaker. the word in public service and uh, also the 10 years because it's long a time for someone to, uh, to be a corporate member. In B, I also propose that uh, we, we replace 10 years with the six years experience of practicing as a registered physical planner for you to be a corporate okay. member. Can we have it redrafted by the Attorney General? Uh, Madam Chair. Right Honorable Chair, 10 years can cause a lot of frustration and therefore... That is understood, you want six years. Madam Chair, with the amendment. Members, let's not behave like we are debating on me. By the time your, your leader of opposition is the alternative uh, government agrees on something. Madam Chair, with those amendments, we propose that it be read as follows. Corporate member means a person who, at the commencement of this act, possesses a degree in physical planning or other physical planning related qualifications with six years working experience as a, as a physical planner, full stop. Or after the commencement of this act, attain six years experience of practicing as a registered planner and is a holder of a certificate of recognition issued by the society. I beg to move. The question that closes the amended as proposed by the committee and further modified by the Attorney General. Those in favor say unto the contrary nay. There is have it. Close two as amended. I put a question that close two as amended stands part of the bill. Those in favor say unto the contrary nay. There is have it. Close three. Chair. Madam Chair, close three. Functions of the board. In fact, immediately after the paragraph G, the following new paragraph H. Co planning profession, justification. This gives the board the function of ensuring that the physical planning profession adheres to the high standard of education and training. Honorable Minister.
Madam Chair, I agree with the proposal of the committee. Thank you. I put a question. Uh, do I serve it? Clause three as amended. I put a question that clause three as amended stands part of the bill. Those in favor say I am to the control in a. The eyes of it. Close for. Close for chair. Madam Chair, close for membership of the board. A sub clause 1C. Substitute the word society for the word institute. Justification. This is consequential to the amendment on the establishment of the society or professional physical planners of Uganda. B. Sub clause 1D, substitute the word society for the word institute justification. This is a consequential to the amendment on establishment of the societal professional physical planners of Uganda. Uh, Minister. Madam Chair, I do agree with the proposal of the committee. Uh, I put a question that the clause for be amended as proposed. Those in favor say unto the control in there. Yes, the clause for as amended. I put a question that clause for as amended stands part of the bill. Those in favor say unto the control in there. The eyes have it. Clause five. I put a question that clause five stands part of the bill. Those in favor say unto the control in eh? Yanima right. Nathan, we are in a committee stage. Instead of laughing, you either say I or no. Okay. Nathan, Mag uh, Annette. Otherwise, we are laughing. You're laughing at me, the preacher has me. <laughs> Close six. Close five. Nathan, you interpreted me. We are on close five. Close five, I put a question that close five stands part of the bill. Doesn't ever say unto the control and eh? The eyes have it. Close six. <laughs> I put a question that close six times. That's close what? Okay. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, I don't know that we are reading from the same report with the chairperson. I quote from the report that the bill under close six provides for the appointment of a registrar who shall be the chief executive officer of the board. But the committee observes that it does not provide for uh, the person specification of the officer. The committee recommends that the bill be amended, provided for the required qualifications for the register of the board. But the committee did not move to make particular qualification, recommendation of qualifications. May we hear from the chairperson whether this was an omission or the attorney general has moved to make particular proposition for the qualifications of the registrar of the board. Attorney general. Uh, right on, uh, um, chair, chair we, we received the report with that comment without any proposal. And to our bill, we were happy with the way it is, so we didn't propose any qualification, any specific qualification, because it seemed to be more an administrative function. So we didn't provide a qualification for it. Especially after looking at the functions that are prescribed, it's an administrative thing. I think that's why the committee never made an amendment. Yes. Uh, so uh, borrowing from what has been happening when we are legislating on other laws, even on tribunals, We've been always uh, prescribing the qualifications. For instance, we say somebody should be at the level of a high court judge. Therefore, this position particularly is very, very critical and we need... You'll find anybody there. 
and the country will be in a mess. Right now, Chair, we are happy to receive the proposals, but when I look at the function that are, done, that are here, they may not quite require a rocket scientist because you keep and maintain a register of physical planners, make necessary uh, corrections and alterations in the register, receive the names of any person ordered to be removed, name the name of a deceased person, entry in incorrectly fraudulently entered, these, the functions here were more clerical. When you go to the functions of the board, the function of the board itself further on, you will see a more technical input. That is where you require the technical person, the, the, the real um, uh, surveyors in there, the real scientists. So it may be a bit difficult for you to prescribe a job. It's, it's really clerical for the registrar in this case. So uh, right on the off, that's why we did not propose any specific qualification. But Madam, Madam Chair, I, 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 I don't buy the argument of the Attorney General because Madam Chair, there are people who have studied this description that is uh, uh, being given to the registrar. For example, when you go to the library, there are people who register files. And critically, when you look at this, this is their work. And I thought at this point, maybe we could really give the qualifications for the people, the officer who is needed to do this. When you look at, uh, you are saying anybody can do it, but when you look at 2B, make necessary alterations and correction in the register in relation to any entry as may be directed. And if somebody is not qualified, somebody can mess up with the old, uh, uh, with the file, which is, uh, 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 given under the uh, leadership of the board, Madam Chairperson. Uh, but wouldn't you be discriminating other people if you say you want somebody with a BBA, with, a, with this kind of, because you can get a surveyor with the with managerial skills. Now there you'd be discriminating other people. Unless if you're saying you want a qualification of a degree without specifying Oh. We do not want to see a situation where a senior four liver is the one who is the registrar. So I would buy your proposal. At least let us give it, you can say a degree holder or a master's degree at that level, but not to leave it totally open. Anybody will be propose. You propose. So I therefore propose the person to be registrar must have a qualification above a degree. Minimum of a minimum, degree. Minimum of a degree. Yeah. But maybe, I have, can we, I make a second proposal? Yeah. Thank you very much, Attorney uh, General. Me, I think we have record officers who are trained in this country. And my proposal is that the person to be in charge should have a degree in record office. No. Something like that. No, you should not discriminate people like that. Uh, mm -hmm. Madam Chair, having listened to the members, I propose that I this be get, amended uh, as follows. Lord, oh, Lord, what are you? Yes. Uh, we propose that the register appointed under subsection one shall be a person who shall hold a minimum qualification of a degree uh, in the requisite qualification. Yeah. Madam Chair. Relevant field, yeah, that one. Madam that one. Chair, this is going to be a very unique law. In every profession, a registrar below that runs day-to-day -day work of that board. You cannot bring someone, a librarian, to run this you, board. you make a suggestion. I'm suggesting yeah, that that just like It's just like you saying that a clerk in parliament should be a member of parliament. No, it is different, Madam <laughs> Madam Chairperson. Okay, make a I'm suggestion. I'm proposing of a degree in physical planning and must be a person at a senior level. 
a member of the profession. No, that one can't work. Madam Chair, I think we need to be cognizant of the fact that the work being done here may require an MBA, a typist, a stenographer. We must remember there are also professionals we have put in here who are not, who are registered assistants. So having a degree in the relevant field is good enough. When you're sending out the, the advert, you shall then mention the relevant fields. That one is fair. Yeah, Madam, Madam Chair, maybe we can add the degree and the experience. Because not that someone who has just qualified from the university can have that job. We can talk so of where do people a get minimum of degree from? and two years experience. Even if somebody is from university, let him or, or her also go and get experience. But, yeah. but, but the school matter. for experience? Proposal, share. Share proposal. Honorable yeah. members, I, I put a, I put a question share. at clause 6 Proposal, chair. Proposal. proposal, chair. Chair, I'm proposing that this matter is so sensitive. Can we stand over it? No, so we are some, not. We are not. The we matter not. is sensitive, right? right we are speaker. not. Issues of just qualification, just getting somebody with a degree, what's sensitive with it? I put a question that clause six be amended by providing for a minimum qualification, minimum education qualification for a registrar to pro as proposed by Attorney General. Those in favor say unto the control in A. Yes, have it. Clause six as amended. I put the question that clause six as amended stands part of the bill. Those in favor say unto the control in A. Yes, have it. Clause seven. Clause seven, I put a question that clause seven stands part of the bill. Those in favor say unto the contrary, eh? The ayes have it. Clause eight. Clause eight, I put a question that clause eight stands part of the bill. Those in favor say unto the contrary, eh? The ayes have it. Clause nine. I put a question that clause nine stands part of the bill. Those in favor say. I and the contrary, in A. The I have it. Close 10. Close 10. I put a question that close 10 stands part of the bill. Those in favor say unto the contrary, in A. The I have it. Close 11. 11, Chair. Madam Chair, close 11. Conditions and qualifications for registration. We draft clause 11 as follows. Conditions and qualification for registration. One, a person is entitled to be registered and have his or her name entered in the register of registered physical planners or registered physical planning assistant if or she is a member of the society. Two, an application under sex, subsection one should be made to the board in the prescribed form and upon payment of prescribed application fee. Three, a person is qualified for registration as a registered physical planner if, he is the, if the board is certified that the applicant A is a holder of a bachelor's or a graduate degree in either urban planning, regional planning, spatial planning, physical planning, other related qualification from a university or other institution recognized by the board. B, has not, has not less than two years practical physical planning experience. C, has successfully undertaken a physical planning project project under the supervision of a registered physical plan, physical plan for not less than six months, and D, a certificate of recognition as a graduate physical planner issued by the society. Four, 
A person is qualified for registration as a registered physical planning assistant if the body is certified with the applicant. A is a hold of a diploma, either in urban planning, regional planning, spatial planning, physical planning, or other related qualifications from a university or other institution recognized by the board. B has not less than two years practical physical planning experience. C has a successfully undertaken a physical planning project under a vision of a registered physical plan for not less than six months. And D, a certificate of recognition as a graduate physical planning assistant issued by the society. Five, save for the requirements of certificate of recognition as a graduate. A physical planner issued by the Doctorate of Philosophy in the field of either urban planning, regional planning, spatial planning, physical planning, or other related qualifications from university or other institution recognized by the board shall be qualified for registration as a registered physical planner without further need to certify the board as to the requirement under section two, justification. One, to provide the clear requirements for registration as a registered physical planner or registered physical planning assistant. Two, to include the professional project requirement before registration. Three, to exempt a PhD holder from prescribed requirements given the level of academic rigor involved in attaining of a doctorate in, in physical planning. Uh, Honorable Minister. Madam Chair, we had a chat with the chairperson of the committee and we are agreeable with the amendment that he's proposing. Yes, Madam uh, Chair. Uh, Madam Chair, I'm not comfortable with the, the word experience. Uh, we don't have a school that teaches in experience. Experience. So. Professional experience. Professional experience. Professional. Madam you Chair, must I have need to. Worked somewhere. Hi. I know it is time for breaking the fast. Madam Chair, my concern is about our presence in the community as East Africa now. You know that we are trying to look for opportunities in other countries like DRC now. Is there anything that you have put in this law that can help us to widen our opportunity? For instance, I don't know whether there is a law that handles registration of uh, our physical planners in the ESC, yeah. so that they're able to, yes, we're widening the market and limiting no, the market. Let, let the so I need a comment, I need a comment on that. Uh, Madam Chair, we and we're have not going to the, legislate the, for the other countries. Physical planning, it, it is, we are formalizing it, but already it had such structures. East Africa is there and Africa it is there. We, we consulted some of them. Honorable it. members, I put a question that clause 11 be amended as proposed. Those in favor, say under the control and eh? The eyes have it. Clause 11. That's part of the bill. Those in favor, say under the control and eh? The eyes have it. Clause 12. I put a question that clause 12 stands part of the bill. Those in favor, say under the control and eh? The eyes have it. Close that. A new close. Madam Chair, close. So insert a new close after close 12 as follows. Recognition of a corporate member. A person who qualifies as a corporate member may apply in the prescribed form and upon payment of the prescribed ap application fee to the society for the for certificate of recognition as such justification to cater for the involvement of the society which 
recognizes the professional guild of physical planners in determining who among the physical planners qualifies as a corporate member. Insert, insertion of a new part. Insert the following new part immediately after. No. It, it ended here. Uh, Minister. Madam Chair, we agree with the new uh, insertion in the bill. Thank you. I put a close. I put a question that uh, a new clause be inserted immediately after clause twelve as proposed. Those in favour say aye, and the contrary nay. The ayes have it. Clause thirteen. Clause thirteen. I put a question that clause thirteen stands. I need to seek the comfort of uh, the land attorney general and. Uh, the chairperson 13, uh, I think you're on the same page. Uh, 13. Whether we be comfortable with the provision uh, in 13, 1B, um, furnishing sufficient guarantee of academic knowledge and the practical experience in physical planning. How do you want to deal with this possible apparent ambiguity on what amounts to sufficient knowledge and how the same can be qualified? Uh, I need to really get your... Then too, you may deal with this uh, at the same time. Um, the, the silence of, of that, uh, on that uh, clause on the duration of this uh, temporary certificate that they should appoint such approval. Is, is, is the temporary eternal? Do you want to propose something to give it more credence? Madam Chair, at the same time, personally, I would not buy to the issue of having temporary certification. It's a serious field. And I thought we would just delete that clause, allow people who are registered, who are qualified, to work. But this thing of temporary, what? Those are the people who mess up the job in the field. By the time you would say that they are seeking for their qualification properly, they have already messed up the whole thing. I would propose we delete that. We go with people who are known officially. Thank you. Madam Chair, um, first of all, the answer to law is that yes, um, the sufficient uh, guarantee furnishes sufficient guarantee of academic knowledge. Those are normally the certification, but you should come along with a membership from your country, from your country. So the membership registration from your country plus your academic qualification should give us the, the, the cover that you're qualified. That, let me finish. The period is a period not exceeding one year. It is provided for or such sufficient time. The issue of removal, uh, honorable member, may be contradicting what we just discussed on the East African community. It may actually be, it may actually be outright illegal for you to temporarily stop people from other countries within the region to work here. It's actually against the East African community. What, the, what this does, it allows the professionals who are coming from other countries to be regulated here. Yes. So your board here knows that there's a surveyor here and there who has come from another country. Otherwise, we shall have people who are using the free movement through the community. Work in Uganda and leave. If the building falls, you have no one to. Rather, if, if, they, if, if they build in the road, you have no one to do it to deal with. So this is actually just get that person while they are here to be regulated by the body. And you know, once you have a temporary registration, you can easily revoke it. 
if you're not satisfied with what the, the, the person is doing. So I, and that is relocate, just like these TVs and radios, they give them temporary uh, licenses. Much obliged, Madam Chair. Now the issue is the mechanism of accrediting them should be really made clear. I don't think the board has the capacity. Is it National Council of Higher Education? Is it who? Can we provide a credible mechanism? Now that is another clause. Hey, within this now that is another that clause. Is Let's move close by close. The problem you're running very fast. I now put a question at close 13 stands part of the bill. Those in favor send the control in A. The eyes have it. Close 14. I put a question at close 14 stands part of the bill. Those in favor send the control in A. Just again for a quick processing, whether the land attorney general. Uh, I want I want to believe we are reading the same document. Issuance of certificates upon registration on 14.2. 14. Issuance of certificates upon registration. Uh, what I'm seeing is capturing only uh, the physical planners. I do not see the physical, the as phys planning assistants being uh, captured here. Uh, 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 they are key stakeholders and the, the rigor regime needs to make provision for their protection as well uh, at issuance of certificates. Can, can we harmonize that so that we, so that by just simply by way of rephrasing, they are captured and then we move on. Thank you. Fourteen point two reads: The person whose name has been entered in the register under Section Eleven A Twelve Thirteen shall, so long as his or her name maintained on the register and subject Section Seventeen, be entitled to adopt and use the style and title physical planner. Now, the physical assistant is issued under Twelve. Under Twelve. So, if he if he's gotten that certification, he's entitled to call himself for purposes of this act a physical planner. That's what we are saying. It, 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 I think the, the, the rationale was to, to, keep, to keep a space because once you enter this space of regulation, whether you're a physical planner or physical assistant, planning assistant, you will commit the same offenses, you will be held to the same high standard. So we do not have a separate standard for a physical planner and a planning assistant. So the moment you get here, you are entitled to use the name a physical planner after your registration. So this is just for title, it's like doctor, uh, it's, it's like title. Thank you. I put a question that clause 14 stands part of the bill. Does in favor say under the control the name? The eyes have it. Clause 15. Clause 15. In favor say under the control the name. The eyes have it. Clause 16. I put a question that clause 16 stands part of the bill. Those in favor say under the control in A. Uh, the eyes have it. Clause 17. I put a question that clause 17 stands part of the bill. Those in favor say under the control in A. Uh, the eyes have it. Chair. Hmm? Insertion of a new part. Insert the following new part immediately after clause 17.6 and before part 4 and the number accordingly as follows. Part 4 Establishment of the Society of Professional Physical Planners of Uganda. Establishing Establishment of the society. One, there is established society to be known as the Society of Professional Physical Planners of Uganda. Two, the society shall be a body corporate with perpetual succession and common seal and shall be capable of suing and being sued in its corporate name and the, and the subject to this act may borrow money acquire and dispose of property and do all such other things as a body corporate 
by the lawful may corporate may lawfully do. Three, Sasat shall be a member the voluntary professional association of professional physical planners of Uganda. Four, the seal of the society shall be authenticated by the signatures of the president of the society and the secretary to the executive council. Membership. One, a person who qualifies to be a registered, registered as a registered physical planner under this act and who applies for membership shall be admitted as a member of the society of professional physical planners. Two, the commissioner, physical planning in the ministry responsible for physical planning and chairperson of the national physical planning board shall be extra official members of the executive council. Annual member admission fee. Members of the society of professional physical planners shall pay such annual member admission fee as may be prescribed by the society, save that the initial annual member admission to the society shall be free of charge. Functions of the society. The function of the society are one, to promote and protect the interest of the physical planning profession, two, to promote and maintain high standard of professional ethics among the members of the physical planning profession, three, to provide programs that support the professional interest of physical planners, four, to do all such lawful acts as may be incidental or conducive to the promotion and carrying out of the physical planning profession, five, to nominate representatives from the society to the board, six, to issue certificate of recognition as person to the provision of this act. Executive Council of the Society. One, there is established the Executive Council of the Society as the governing body responsible for the supervision of the affairs of the society. Two, the Executive Council shall consist of the following. A, the President, B, the Secretary, C, the Treasurer, and D, four council members elected by the members of the society as Three, the Commission of Physical Planning in the Ministry responsible for physical planning and the chairperson of physical planning board shall be ex official members of the Executive Council. Four, the minister shall within six months of the coming into force of this act appoint an interim Executive Council which shall organize the inaugural general meeting of the society within 12 months of its appointment. At appointment at which the first executive council shall be elected. Tenure of the office. A member of executive council, other than an ex official member, shall hold office A in the first instance for a period not exceeding, ex exceeding three years, and B shall be legible for re election only for a, sub a subsequent period not exceeding three years. Certificate of recognition. The society may, upon a payment of prescribed fee issued to any applicant, a certificate of recognition as a graduate physical planner or graduate physical planning assistant, if the society is certified that the applicant is a holder of a, a bachelor's or postgraduate degree or a diploma in urban planning regional planning, partial planning, physical planning, or other related qualification, respectively, from a university or other institutes recognized by the board. Deletion of, delegation of functions. Planners, the executive council may appoint committees and other officers to carry out delegated functions, justification. Just like in, in applicable, applicable in medical architecture, pharmacy, accountancy, engineering, surveying, legal profession, this ensures physical planners association associates in an organized manner as professionals of Uganda. The right to associate is constitutional. Thank you. Minister.
Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I would like to propose a small amendment to three, which read the society shall be a member led professional association. It read the society shall be a member led voluntary association of professionals and physical planners of Uganda. I want to propose that the society shall be a member led, delete voluntary, a member led professional association of professional physical planners of Uganda. That means every physical planner must be a member of this association in order for everyone to be under the control of the association. I beg to move. Thank you. Briefly, I was a little worried. About planning act. Now, if we decide to put a lot of these prescriptions, the details about the society, are we not taking away their right as a society to deal with their matters? Because if we go back to the objects of this bill, I, I don't know whether we are not deviating from the main purpose of the bill. I thought we should be stopping at a certain level. For instance, he's saying there must be what? A society which is member-led, and we leave it at that. But we are going into it like to even prescribe so-and-so should be here. So are we ready to provide all that money? Because I thought there's a, some financial implication on that. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, one, this uh, bill is not out of the ordinary in any profession. The exercise of rights is under control. So you go to school, you study law like I did for, five, for four years, and then I am told that for me to practice, I must have a practicing certificate, and I must go and become a member of law society, and I must go and renew it every year, and I must be inspected, and if I'm in discipline, that law council can dismiss me from the bar. That's what we are dealing with here, that you can practice your practice, but let your peers check on what you did. It would, be, it would be a bit difficult if professionally, but well within the ordinary limits. Thank you. Honorable members, I put a question that the proposed new part be inserted immediately after close seven with a clause 17 with amendment from the Attorney General. Those in favor say unto the contrary, nay. Aye. The ayes have it. Clause 18. Chair. Madam Chair, clause 18, disciplinary, disciplinary committee, sub clause 1 B. Redraft sub clause 1 B as follows B. Four persons appointed by the board on a recommendation to involve the society in appointment of the members of the disciplinary committee to, to avoid the conflict of interest by ensuring that the disciplinary committee is not entirely constituted from the board members. Yes, uh... yeah, thank you. Madam Chair, I thought the board acts on the behalf of the society. And I feel it should be what is in the old, the old bill is, is more appropriate. It should be four persons appointed by the board among the members. Because the board acts on the behalf of the society. And why do you want to remove the powers of the board? Yet the board is there on the behalf of the society. So let it be four persons appointed by the board among the members. Once the board has given their opinion, it's final because they're acting on, the, on behalf of the society. Uh uh, first of all, uh, Madam Chair, we do concede this position um, from the government side. We, we, 
you have two scenarios. You have the board which can become a god unto itself. And it becomes non-responsive to the members themselves. So you can have board capture. So by introducing people who are brought by appointed, because the chairperson is from the board, but the members in their meeting choose four people to go and discipline them. So that kind of brings a balance between the two. You will not have board capture, but it's also it's not, it's not out of the ordinary. I know the accountants board, at least I read that, does that. The law society does that. When we are law council, the law society elects two people who represent it on. Nobody's have representatives from there, from among themselves, who sit on the committee. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would like the Attorney General uh, to give me a clarification on why we are opting for a disciplinary committee instead of uh, setting up a tribunal. Uh, and whether a body uh, with judicial functions and for any institution as the one we are now creating, we do not have a tribunal instead of a disciplinary committee. In my simple understanding, it sounds as if a disciplinary committee is a weaker entity than a tribunal. Thank you. Call it a tribunal. We can call it a court. We can call it a committee. Its function will remain the same. And here, a committee is more is what is commonly used in spaces of uh, professional spaces. They use committees because it's normally a committee of their own peers. But the word the word would not change anything here. The word would not change anything. They will have the same powers. As I propose that we leave it as it is. It will allow, it will perform the function as is expected of it. Honorable <laughs> Betty, it's like bringing a, a disciplinary committee for MPs without recommendation of <laughs> parliamentary commission. I now put a question that can, that clause 18 be amended as proposed. Those in favor say unto the contrary, ne? Guys, have it. Clause 18 as amended. I put a question that clause 18 as amended stands part of the bill. Those in favor say unto the contrary, ne? Guys, have it. Clause 19. I put a question that clause 19 stands part of the bill. Those in favor say unto the contrary, ne? I have it. Close 20. I send the control name. I have it. Close 21. I put a question that close 21 stands part of the bill. Those in favor send the control name. I have it. Close 22. I put a question that close 22 stands part of the bill. Those in favor send the control name. The the eyes have it. Close 23. If you're here sleeping, get out. <laughs> the eyes have it. Close 23. I put a question that close 23 stands part of the bill. Those in favor say to the control and eh? The eyes have it. Close 24. At least now you have woken now. <laughs> I put a question that close 24 stands part of the bill. Those in favor say to the control and eh? The eyes have it. Close 25. I put a question that close 25 stands part of the bill. Those in favor say to the control and eh? The eyes have it. Close 26. I put a question that close 26 stands part of the bill. Those in favor say to the control and eh? The eyes have it. Close 27. 
I put a question that clause 27 stands part of the bill, those in favor say unto the control in A. Yes, have it. Clause 28. I put a question that clause 28 stands part of the bill, those in favor say unto the control in A. Yes, have it. Clause 29. I put a question. Uh, President of the Chair, again, seeking the comfort of the land that in general, because 29 is about uh, uh, the bill provided for commencement of proceedings against a person in a court of law in a similar matters which have been or are still being considered under the committee. And we dealing with the expression of double jeopardy and the potentially delving into miscarriage of justice. How do you reconcile this? matters in court and still under consideration by committee. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, thank you very much, uh, Lok. This, this has, been, has been litigated extensively in our jurisdiction. And the courts have found without reservation that the function of a disciplinary committee is different from the function of a court. For example, if you're being charged with corruption in the criminal court, you are required to prove beyond reasonable doubt. But in the tribunal, it is on the balance, it's a much lower standard. So the tribunal could actually, the court could find you guilty and the tribunal cannot, must find you guilty, but it could be different the other way around. But they've, they've litigated this, but also it created a, a, a great deal of paralysis. And I think the courts came out to assist us resolve that. What would happen is that once a disciplinary proceeding started, then the courts were stopped from going on. And once court started, disciplinary activities stopped. So a person is in an office, a criminal trial is taking three years and they're accused of fraud. Now that's complicated. Yet in our law, a matter of that nature should be dealt with by the, by the committee there within six months. So the, but there's no contradiction legally. This has been litigated and resolved extensively by the courts. I think even the highest court now has pronounced itself on that. Uh, 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 now you are not counting. This is matters of the law. That clause 29 starts part of the bill. Those in favor send the contrary nay. The eyes have it. Clause 30. I put a question that clause 30 stands part of the bill. Those in favor say under the control and A. The ayes have it. Clause 31. I put. Madam oh, no, Chair, you know, this matter as well, Madam Chair, even uh, paralegals should have their say. Uh, yeah. uh, that one, that uh, one. Uh, I'm seeking the attention of the line at Ungeno. Probably it's a question of. Uh, uh, Draft, uh, drafting, 31, providing for the board may with the authority of the accountant general, open and maintain bank accounts. Is opening an account discretionary or need to, to change the coaching of this phrase? Because uh, how do you deal with uh, the accounts or the funds of uh, the agency if opening a bank account is coached discretionary? Um, Land Attorney General, do we want to change the the coaching of this uh, particular clause? Uh, you're correct, uh, 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 Madam Chair. Uh, thank, thank, thank you, Leader of Opposition. I think we should, uh, we should draft it to read the board shall with the authority of the thing. I, I thank you very much, most obliged. Mm. I therefore propose that the, the clause 31 31 1 be amended to read the board shall, with the authority of the accountant general, open and maintain a bank accounts as are necessary for the performance of the functions of the board. I beg to move. Thank you. I put a question at clause 31 be amended as proposed by the attorney general. Those in favor say I under the control and eh? Clause 31 as amended. I put a question that clause 31 as amended becomes stands part of the bill. Those in favor say to the control and 
The eyes have it. Close 32. Clause 32, I put a question that clause 32 sounds part of the bill. Does in favor say until a control in A? The eyes have it. Clause 33. I put a question that clause 33 sounds part of the bill. Does in favor say until a control in A? The eyes have it. Clause 34. I put a question that clause 34 stands part of the bill. Does in favor say until the control in A? The eyes have it. Close 35. I put a question that close 35 stands part of the bill. Those in favor say unto the contrary nay. The eyes have it. Close 36. I put a question that close 36 stands part of the bill. Those in favor say unto the contrary nay. The eyes have it. Close 37. Again, uh... It could be a, a matter of uh, draft, uh, honorable chair. The powers uh, of the registrar, uh, honorable chair, I'm bringing it to the land attorney general's attention to alter the register. These, these powers uh, seem to be wide ranging and uh, might give the leeway to the registrar to deal with the register they deem fit. Would it be uh, pleasing to you, the Land Attorney General, to qualify these powers with authority of the board to deal with the powers uh, to the registrar alone? Then you might be dealing with uh, issues later because there is no qualification to the powers of the registrar to deal with the register. It should, only, it should be the board or the disciplinary committee sitting and probably um, dealing with a member whose matters have been dealt with to qualify these powers uh, should be upon decision and the guidance of the board or our the committee that such alteration should be effected you may also want to deal with um, um, uh, 37 2 at the same time one of chair and line attorney general for notices to members who have subsequently been Sufficient to be able to have quit the profession. Uh, there is a silence about the mode of communication. Um, I want to propose that uh, should be, uh, because we are dealing with effective communication, should be either through the Gazette or a newspaper of wide circulation in 37 uh, 2. The Land Attorney General, uh, I think, has picked it, can uh, advise his comfort. Thank you. Uh, two mixed up functions in here, the ones that should be uh, routine and the ones that would require some intellectual or actual input. So I propose that we do amend clause 37 to read as follows. 37.1, the registrar may make, may a, make any correction in the register as may be necessary with the approval of the board. B remains as it is, removed from the register the name of a deceased physical planner, because that doesn't require any, any intellectual uh, exercise. C, remove from the register the name of a physical planner whose name has been ordered to be removed under this act. So if the registrar has the order, he can remove. He doesn't need anyone's intervention. And then four, with the consent of the physical planner concerned, remove from the register the name of a physical planner who has ceased to practice. That also doesn't need any intervention. So the proposal is to add to 37.1a at the end with the approval of the board. So where it is not clear what exactly a supposed exercise we should have with the approval of the board. Then for 37.2, it reads, where the registrar has reason to believe that a registered physical planner has ceased to practice, or he or she may send to the physical planner a notice seeking clarification as to whether, on whether the physical plan, planner has ceased to practice in Uganda, if no reply is received. So I wanted to propose that uh, shall send a notice to the physical planner's last known address and Gazette, publish the same in the Gazette. Because when we register as professionals, you must have an address. 
So if we send it to the last known address and gazette and publish it in the gazette. So I'd propose that we redraft it to read as follows in full. Where the registrar has reason to believe that a registered physical planner has ceased to practice, he or she may send to the physical planner a notice, a, may send to the physical planner at the last known address a notice and publish this, a notice in the Gazette seeking clarification on whether the physical planner has ceased to practice in Uganda. And if no reply is received by the registrar within six months from the date of the notice, the registrar shall remove from the register the name of the physical planner. I beg to move. I put a question that clause 37 be amended as proposed by the Attorney General. Does in favor say unto the contrary nay? Clause, the eyes have it. Clause 37 as amended. I now put a question that clause 37 as amended stands part of the bill. Does in favor say unto the contrary nay? The eyes have it. Clause 38. Clause 38. I put a question that clause 38 stands part of the bill. Those in favor say unto the contrary nay. The ayes have it. Clause 39. I put a question that clause 39 stands part of the bill. Those in favor say unto the contrary nay. The ayes have it. Clause 40. I put a question that clause 40 stands part of the bill. Those in favor say unto the contrary nay. The ayes have it. Clause 41. I put a question that clause 41 stands part of the bill. Those in favor say unto the control the name. Yes, I read. Clause 42. I put a question that clause 42 stands part of the bill. Those in favor say unto the control the name. Yes, I read. Clause 43. Yes, I read. Clause 43. Madam Chair, I propose. The committee made some proposals that the bill should increase the fine payable by, by an offender to 100 currency. As I agree, currency points, as I agree with the report. However, my concern is on the kind of punishment given to the culprits who may have slept on their duty. For instance, when the building collapsed and claimed lives. I would propose that the, imp the imprisonment be more than two years, what do I speak? And is be 10 years such that it becomes a lesson to others not to joke around with construction and people's lives, what do I speak? Otherwise, what we are experiencing in Kampala and other cities is bribery and the negligence of physical planners swear by the rich. You know, these are physical planners, not the engineers who do the real construction of the work. These are physical planners, not the engineers. Attorney General. Uh, Madam Chair, I think you have uh, answered the question. But we also need to be careful here. If you commit, if you do something which causes the death of another person, that is manslaughter. So you are charged under the penal code for manslaughter, the, the penalty for which is life in prison. Mm. So if you put it here and reduce it, you may be contradicting the penal code. Mm. So that, that's a different offense. Thank you. I put a question that clause 43 stands part of the bill. Does in favor say the control and nay? The eyes have it. Clause 44. I put a question that clause 44 stands part of the bill. Does in favor say the control and nay? The eyes have it. Clause 45. Chair. Madam Chair, clause 45. Regulations, sub clause. Insert a new paragraph B as follows and renumber 
accordingly. B, the conduct of the affairs of the society, including elections, election, elections guidelines for the executive council of the society, financial regulation of the society, and the other related matters. Honorable Minister. Madam Speaker, we, Madam Chair, we do agree with the Chair of the Committee. I put a question that clause 45 being amended as proposed. Does in favor say unto the contrary, nay? The eyes have reached. Clause 45 as amended. I put a question that clause 45 as amended stands part of the bill. Does in favor say unto the contrary, nay? The eyes have it. Clause 46. I put a question that clause 46 stands part of the bill. Those in favor say unto the contrary, nay. The eyes have it. Clause 47. 47. Madam Chair, clause 47 to transition. We draft the clause as follows. Where on the coming into force of this act, a person as a registered physical planner or registered physical planning assistant that a pers that person shall be entitled to continue pra practice as a registered physical planner or registered physical planning assistant upon issuance of a six month interim registration certificate issued by the minister minister Madam Chair, we concur with the Chair of the Committee. I put it. Those in favor say unto the contrary, nay. Aye. Clause 47 as amended. I now put a question that Clause 47 as amended stands part of the bill. Those in favor say unto the contrary, nay. Aye. Honorable that whereas the committee had a proposed an amendment to clause two, the correct clause that was to be amended was clause one. I therefore invite the chairman to make a correction accordingly so that we record it. That was an interpretation. The amendment is on clause one, not two. That was an interpretation. Madam Chair, uh, the report reads clause two, but what was being amended was clause one. And the amendment possesses a degree in physical planning or other physical planning related qualifications with six years working experience or a planner or as a physical planner. B, after commencement of this act, attain six years experience of practicing as a registered planner, physical planner, and is a holder of a certificate of recognition from the society. It was then deleting the, the definition of institute, which was a consequential amendment as a result of renaming it society. Then it was introducing registered planner immediately after the definition of planning assistant. Registered physical planner means a person whose name is duly entered in the register. And for the purposes of part four of this act includes any person permitted to practice under section 13. It was then deleting registered physical planner and giving that definition. 
and then introducing society immediately after registrar to mean a society of professional physical planners established under this act. That was the proposal that had been made by the committee. Government wished only introduce an amendment to, to the definition of regist register. Register means the register of, a phys of physical and planning assistance kept under clause eight of this act. The shadow have read it. The shadow introduced six years, so I've read the, the whole amendment as it were. Thank you, Attorney General. I put a question that clause one be amended as proposed. Those in favor say unto the contrary nay. Clause one as amended. I now put a question that clause one as amended stands part of the bill. Those in favor say unto the contrary nay. The eyes have it. Subsequently, I put a question that clause two stands part of the bill. Those in favor say aye and to the contrary nay. And we have amended clause one and not clause two. Schedule one. Schedule one stands part. I put a question that schedule one stands part of the bill. Those in favor say unto the contrary in a. Yes, have it. Schedule two. I put a question that schedule two. Schedule two. Maybe I'm overzealous or suspicious. We just said for posterity. Uh, providing for uh, body meetings. Uh, uh, my concern is relating to, um, to the provision that uh, the validity of proceedings that uh, any detection, um, any defect in appointment of a board member should not affect proceedings over the board. And uh, for me, this is a bit of a lacuna in the law. Uh, it's a form of a way, smooth way uh, in which people do not qualify or take up appointments. After all, the appointing authority is uh, in a way exonerated. Uh, Madam Chair, my proposal would be that uh, this lacuna can be bridged. There should be there should be their consequences for people who take up appointments by manipulating systems once detected, because it's simply it will not affect the board proceedings. Um, I, I think my sense is that the land attorney general uh, would probably, by way of uh, amending, I'm just looking at it right here. I'm not, I'm not coming up with a very clear amendment, but I am very uncomfortable with a plain statement that uh, a wrong appointment will not affect board proceedings. So if somebody's not qualified, will take up an appointment comfortably until detected, we'll get away with anything. We'll aware that they are not qualified. Can we draw from the experience of the land at general so that we do not leave a lacuna to, in which uh, fraudsters and their accomplices will exploit? Thank you very much, Lop. Thank you, Madam Chair. That, that's a, a conundrum which we must uh, continue to look at and try and find a solution to because you are dealing with two, two ills. If you cancel the work of the board, then all the work they have done until the time you have made the discovery has been wasted. So we are, we, are, we are mindful of that. And this is also in the Interpretation Act. So we'll probably need to go back and deal with the principles that we deal with. But you're right. Anyone who does that fraudulently, yes, the person who does that fraudulently, commits an offense. I, I, can, I can tell you about uh, 10 offenses, obtaining money by false pretenses, making a false misrepresentation. There are many offenses you can get them for. But the purpose of this clause is normally to protect the work that has been done, because you may find out of seven members, one person is the one who had a problem, yes. but the other six are okay. So it's a, it's, you're correct, it's a problem, but it's a neat balance we need to, I, I, I beg that we leave it here until such a time when we are sure on how to deal with this. 
And actually, that is also in the Administration of Parliament Act, especially in the Commission. Schedule two. I put a question that Schedule two stands part of the bill. Those in favor say until the Schedule three. Uh, right front of the chair. It provides for uh, um, procedure of the disciplinary committee, particularly three, one, and two, uh, provided for the time frame of communicating to the accused person, they accused the complaint and a hearing days. The, the gap I envisage, there's no time frame in which uh, defense must be filed and uh, it can be abused. You communicate to me um, the nature of a complaint against me, and you say we are here you on Monday. Uh, may we borrow from a civil procedure to make clear provision on communicating uh, a date for firing a defense uh, by the accused, uh, land attorney general. Because uh, short of that, we could be soundtracking into a violation of the right to a fair hearing. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. It is actually provided for because it says, uh, one, two, it says the physical planner or planning assistant against whom a complaint is made shall be given a copy of the relevant documents at least seven days before the date of filing to enable him file a reply to the complaint. Mm. And the date of hearing is 14 days. Yes. So you have those seven days within which to file. Mm. Yes, that's the, that's the understanding that you must give this person at least 14 days before, seven days before the hearing, you must give them the, the complaint. The, 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 the thing with this is if you make them very, very strict, you need to allow, some of the people don't want to use uh, uh, lawyers, others want to do them themselves. Also, the informality allows them to even come more forward and say, yes, I agree, I made a mistake here and there. So you, you want to keep it as, as, as flexible, but keeping within the six months as possible. Mr. Honorable Chair, I, I understand the explanation. Probably we, we, we may have to concur with the Alantogen about substantiality of the time. Would you want to enlarge it to say 14 days? 14 days is okay. So uh, and not I'm trying to interpret what is written. Communication within seven days. Seven days. And then the hearing. Fourteen days. Fourteen that days. That is sufficient. Okay. That is sufficient. I put a question that schedule three stands part of the bill. Those in favor say unto the control in A. Yes, of it. Schedule four. I put a question that schedule four stands part of the bill. Those in favor say unto the control in A. There is have it. Title. Title. I put a question that the title stands part of the bill. There is have it. Motion for resumption of the house. There's a clarification Attorney General wants to make. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. I just wanted to make a clarification and uh, sincerely apologize to the house. When I was answering Lop's question on uh, clause 14.2, I did state that the use of the name physical planner includes a planning assistant. It excludes a planning assistant. Just for clarification, it excludes 11A, 12, and 13 deal with qualified physical planners. So it excludes, I sincerely apologize for that. Thank you very much. Motion for resumption of the house. Honorable Minister. Madam. Uh, ma Madam Chair. I'm only seeking a procedural guidance here. Whether it is not proper that the data amendment comes by way of recommitter. It's not an amendment. Because it's already, 
It's not an amendment. It's already captured there, and for us it's to correct it. It's not an amendment. He has already made a correction that when he was communicating to the to to, to the law issue question, he, he made a mistake. Hey, you know, Silo is an accountant. Honorable Minister. Madam Chair, I beg to move that the House do resume and the committee of the whole House reports there too. I put a question that the House do resume and the committee of the whole House reports there too. Those in favor say unto the contrary, nay. The eyes have been. Report of the Committee of the Whole House. Honorable Minister. Uh, Madam Speaker, I beg to report that the Committee of the Whole House mm -hmm. has considered the bill entitled the Physical Plan as a Registration Bill. 2021 and passed it with amendments. Motion for adoption of the report of the Committee of the Whole House. Honorable Minister. Madam Speaker and Honorable Colleagues, I beg to, to report. I beg to move that the report from the Committee of the Whole House be adopted. I put a question that the the, the House adopts the report of the Committee of the Whole House. Those in favor say unto the contrary, nay. Third reading, the Physical Planners Registration Bill 2021. Honorable Minister. Madam Speaker, I beg to move that the bill entitled the Physical Planners Registration Bill 2021 be read the third time and do pass. I put a question that uh, the bill, I put a question that the fiscal planners registration bill 2021 be read for the third time and do pass. Those in favor say unto the contrary, nay. The eyes have it. A bill for an act entitled the Physical Planners Registration Act 2022. Bill passed and title settled. Congratulations. Congratulations, Minister of uh, Lands, Urban and Fiscal Planning. I also want to congratulate the chairperson and the committee and sincerely thank the Attorney General with his team. I want to thank the Borrowed Minister of Lands, Honorable Bahati, uh, <laughs> who lent his services, and our Government Chief Whip, Sean, the Prime Minister, thank you, and Lob, thank you for being a lot. Lob, thank you for being a lot, and, uh, and the Shadow, Silo, thank you for being an accountant. <laughs> and all the honorable members of parliament, thank you for passing this very important bill. I really sincerely want to thank you. And I want to request all members who still have bills in their committees to bring them and we fin finalize with them before we close the financial year. We must make a record that we have enough bills. Attorney General, this is your time. We must make a record and we have the bills passed and processed by this house. And thank you, Imad, for saying nay all the time. Imad, 
Atat, thank you for being present, and, and Betty, thank you for your contribution of nay. I, I want to thank the whole house, and I therefore, had, hey, Prime Minister, say, I am tired. Yeah. Right, honorable opportunity on behalf of government to thank you because we have passed an important bill that will help us to stimulate the work of the Ministry of Lands, especially in the area of fiscal planning and the urban planning but the right on our speaker i also want to thank the members in a special way yesterday the members accorded this country accorded the parliament a lot of time that we were able to handle all the committee reports and conclude when it was coming to 10 o'clock on behalf of government i want to say thank you to you to your person to the persons of the committees members of the committees the speaker in a special way and the clerks. But I also want to thank in a special way the leader of opposition and all the shadow ministers for being so active, both in the committee, but also here. Let's continue working together, building consensus as a team as we serve this country. Thank you so much members. But members remember we are still in the budget process. So now that we are moving to the next stage, we require your much attention and presence. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, on behalf of my chairman, we want to thank members for supporting and passing this uh, report. But Right Honorable Speaker, as we move to the weekend, I just want to raise this matter that has been brought to my attention about a woman called Alexandria Marilon Nisi, 29 years, who has twice been kidnapped from her home in Mbuya. She was first kidnapped or arrested by some men in a drone on the 30th of March. 2022, and kept in unknown places, beaten, gang raped, and released after three days. On Easter Monday, right honorable speaker, this lady was again picked from her home by the same people, taken to an unknown place because she was blindfolded, gang raped, beaten. I have very ugly photos of this lady. If you see them, you can't believe. The whole body has wounds, right honorable Only. speaker. And right honorable speaker, she alleges that one Sengova Elias and another Ali Hassan are her kidnappers and they are believed to be members of the security forces. Right honorable speaker, I said it is alleged. Yes. So right honorable speaker, it's extremely unfortunate that we have such incidences happening in our country. And why do you pick a woman from her house? Take her, rape her, handcuff her. Because ordinary people cannot handcuff. These must be people within the security circles, right honorable speaker. So right honorable speaker, I want to request you, right honorable speaker, intern affairs, to come and report because this lady has even gone to Kinawataka police. It is alleged that the police refused to take her statement. So, right honorable speaker, the Minister of Internal Affairs happened. Otherwise, as a uh, weapon, we are not happy with this kind of state honorable, of affairs that is going on. Honorable, honorable uh, Opendi, thank you for the information. For us, what touches one woman touches all the women. And of course, when it touches a woman, it affects the men. 
the Minister of Internal Affairs should come to this house on Tuesday and report what happened, what action they have taken, and what preventive measures they are taking to avoid such things from... Clarification, Speaker. Speaker, clarification. Yes. Agent. We need to know what happened. Because... Clarification. Right, Honorable Speaker. Clarification first. Let, let Lumumba first give us. Right, Honorable Speaker. I'm sorry I came in before you concluded, but my why I did so is to put the prayer to the member who has raised this issue, to cooperate with the minister in charge of internal affairs, because what she has given may not be enough for the minister to make a statement here. But if she cooperates and leads the minister to the person and those individuals so that we can get proper information yeah, that's to okay. the bottom of it and we have a report presented here that is a detailed yes. one provide the information provide the clarification provide information to the minister also to attorney general because Further these are things these are things that cause attorney general problems they start torturing people left right center at the end of the day the person to respond is attorney general Further clarification. Thank you, right, Honorable Speaker. Further I will clarification. pass over the information, right? Honorable clarification. members, if you are starting a debate, I left this house at 10 last evening. I am adjourning the house to Tuesday at 2. Oh, <laughs> my 